Yeah! Uh, this is another episode of UFO Garage. I'm Ben. And I'm Joe. And this is where we talk about UFOs, aliens, and all things weird. Hey, dude. Uh, did you know that we have, uh, rec- we're about to record 30 episodes of this podcast? 30? Is it 30, the, dude? The dirty 30? Nitty city, man. Already. Could, did you think we'd ever be to, at this point? Bro, never. 30 not, episodes? That's crazy. Not to mention... We only thought we were going to do like eight. Not to mention, would I ever think that by episode 30, we'd be talking to somebody from the USS Nimitz? Yeah. And the USS Princeton. Like, we were th- like you were saying earlier, oh, maybe we could have our neighbor on, or like my buddy... And then now we're like, what? Yeah. These legit dudes that saw the most famous UFO incident, the most well-documented, backed-up UFO story of all time, of, of history, the people that were there are on our podcast and I did. Yeah. That's going to be <laughs> sick. I'm, I'm, so, I'm, I'm beyond excited. To be honest with you, I'm a, I'm a little bit nervous. Well, it makes me nervous because, like, I'm seeing all this stuff uh, like Beyond Meat. Like, what, what's in it? You know, like, what, are the, what's, what's the catch? Yeah, you know? yeah, beyond exactly. excited. <laughs> what's the catch? Yeah, dude, I'm, I'm extremely stoked. Uh, episode thirty. This is a huge milestone for us. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I posted earlier uh, last week. You know, like we hit sixty subs on on YouTube, Hell and yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's. It may not seem like it's that big of a deal, but uh, it's going to be nice to look back and, and see the small accomplishments that we've made. Yeah, man. You know, the, right? And, and we st- we st- going to start out with little, little tiny steps. Little wee steps. Uh, <laughs> dude, so I'm super stoked. Um, yeah, Gary Voorhees, uh, he was on the USS Princeton. Yep. And PJ Hughes. Yep. yep. Uh, dude, he was on the Nimitz. He was on the Nimitz. Man, I'm so stoked. The uh, the uh, the podcast has kind of gone through these little ebbs and flows of like we'll have a, 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 a like a guest on and we'll do like a goofy one, but my favorite goofy one, <laughs> and everybody's just like that zero APR fucking <laughs> truck thing, man. Oh man, yeah, everybody seemed to really like the last one. And, and my dad, um, my dad, my dad's here staying with me tonight, and we, we you and I were just out talking to him, <laughs> and he just went. To go buy a, a car, a, a US a, a SUV, and I'm like, Dad. So you know, he's talking to him about that, and he was like, "Well, y'all come on down here." <laughs> he, he's never heard that. Uh, never heard, heard the episode. episode. <laughs> it sounded exactly like what we've oh, been talking about. Shit, it was hilarious, man. Uh, it was hilarious. Yeah, dude. But yeah, dude. So what do we got on the podcast today, uh, dude? We got uh, William. Uh, William uh, is a, uh, he's a OG of the uh, the the podcast. Podcast. Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. He, start, he started a podcast. I guess he's a part of uh, the Bearded Band of Brothers. It's it's Bob. Bob. B O B B. It's it stands for Big Old Booty Bandits. Big Old. So booty if you bandits. ain't careful, you got a big old booty. You better look out. They're gonna come but- steal that. Oh, a funky bunch. We're looking for <laughs> no, it's, big old it's, booty it's, band. It's band of bearded brothers. Yeah, that's it. But hey, William, I think I think maybe y'all should rethink that into a uh, uh, big old booty big bandits. Old booty you know bandits. what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I, I came up with that all on my own. But uh, yeah, dude, I I love the podcast. So yeah, that's so, dope. Uh, thank you so much for the shout out uh, yeah. in y'all's UFO episode, man. Um, so we're gonna return the favor, man. Hell you guys yeah. go check out check out Bob. They talk um, about. Cool cool stuff like uh, <laughs> mind, mind manipulation they just yeah. did a ufo uh, uh, episode yeah uh, yeah it's it's two brothers who enjoy a good conversation uh and let's see what else do they have in here a uh, multi-planet species will we be a multi-planet species soon stuff like that like all kinds of cool shit that we're into it, it definitely it definitely gets the gears uh yeah. the old gears of grinding yeah. and, and the old noggin and what i appreciate about it is that they're very uh fact oriented yeah you know, they're very well read on on the stuff they're talking about unlike us where we're talking about fucking you know <laughs> dicks and shit well they're they're very much like kind of hey here's what here's what they said and here's yeah. what happened like dates and stuff and they do a really good job yeah they're cool uh and one of the episodes i know he was talking about how they had writ- written a script 
and they were going to go off a script, uh, yeah. and it didn't work. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. It it it's hard, guys. Yeah. <laughs> we 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 axed the script, you know, <laughs> yeah. right off the bat. We we're I like, th- this shit ain't going to work. Well, I think we we <laughs> even just knew that one is not going to work. Like, we also that. could not be news anchors. No way, dude. Yeah. Unless they let us freestyle. Man, tonight we have a, <laughs> a, a, a podcast of Puck and They'd be like, and now we're going to Joe with traffic. And I'd be like. <laughs> I mean, it's fucked up, honestly. <laughs> I mean, there's there's just so much traffic right now. Don't even get in your car. Honestly, you should probably just just like Uber Uber your dinner yeah. tonight. Man, right? back the sports with bed. <laughs> there's a ball. <laughs> That was sports. That was it. <laughs> that was it. There's a ball. There's a ball. It was a touch goal. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, Bob, y'all check it out. Uh, They're on Facebook, too. Yeah, those dudes are awesome. Uh, and so, another podcast shout out. Another uh, OG. Chris Holm has been there since the beginning as hey, well. Hey, what up, Chris? Our, our, our boy, dude. He started another. He started his own podcast called uh, let's, uh, the uh, Conspire a Theory. And uh, he did the episode with Jack Carroll. Uh, part one, uh huh, and then now part Sick. two just came out. Dude, Sick. That uh, what, tell me what you were telling me a little bit. Dude, about that this, this part. episode is nuts. Don't yeah. give away too much because we want people to listen okay. to it, but uh, we, we want it to intrigue the mind so people will go to and listen to this episode. If you're if you're into uh, time manipulation, uh, if you like mansions in the desert, uh, uh, you know, uh, maybe uh. Your your body changing into a burrito, uh, not a burrito. Oh no, not this time. Uh, if, if you're into your physical body changing into your origin species on your own home planet, Whoa. definitely check this shit out. Shit. <laughs> so like, Dude. if you were originally an alien species from a different planet, what would happen if you went back to that planet exactly. and they made you see what you look like? What? Yeah, uh, I gotta. I got. I haven't seen it yet or yeah. listening to it. Yeah. Good job on this one, Chris. Uh, I, I. He's so he's writing a book. That's why it's the memoirs. Oh. So you know, if there is a part three, dude. Oh, I hope you do it, man. Because yeah. that's uh, this story has been like nuts, right? Nuts. Yeah. Like. Oh yeah. It's, it's been great. That's it's awesome. Definitely dude. been great. That's super dope. Uh. So. Uh. Oh, what was the song? What's next? The song? Where, where did it, it, scroll down a little bit? Uh, t- t- yeah, dude. If if you ever, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you ever get to meet an alien and y'all become <laughs> friends, what's the first song you play for it? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys had some great ones. Yeah, I, I'm glad that got a good response. Seriously, uh, we, what Joseph said, uh, "Purple Haze." Purple Haze, classic. Oh, live my brain. Of course. Uh, dude, Queen, Bohemian Rhapsody, absolutely. I mean, yeah. Joseph again with another classic, of course. That was the other Joseph, though. That's, oh, the, new, that's oh. the new Joseph. Oh, my gosh. It's the new Joseph. What's up, dude? Yeah, dude. Uh, Bohemian Rhapsody, I think, yeah, totally. Um, and then, after you showed them that masterpiece, you got to go through an entire album. Right, because yeah. it would it would uh, tickle the ET's brain, right? For sure. What else do these guys have? Yeah, absolutely. Is this the real <laughs> life? It's just just a puppy. All right. Uh, let's see. What's mask? What's mask off? Have you heard of that? Yeah, that's uh. Is that Miley Cyrus? No. In sync. It's that song. Uh, uh, fucking uh, Jim Carrey. It's something, mask. Ab- something about Molly Percocet. Oh, okay. All right. So, okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's all. I, all Josh, right. Fucking love that. Josh, what are you trying to get us all killed? Jesus. Jesus Josh. Christ, Josh. Of course, Josh would post that. <laughs> Damn it. Can, to trip us up. Oh, my God. I love that. Uh, uh, Chris, Everlong? Chris right? said Everlong. That's a great. Yeah. Yep. That's a great song. Yep. That's an awesome one. Yep. Uh, Foo Fighters. Yep. Totally. Totally Tuts. show the aliens Foo Fighters. Tuts my guess. Absolutely. Uh, William with the uh, Andrea Bocelli Conte oh. Partiro Classic Classical Classic Classical if, uh, if, if, if they wanted If they wanted to cry tears of joy mm. This is what you would uh, You would show the ETs Yeah okay Yeah absolutely Alright Alien I'm gonna make you cry You did 1612 by Volpe 1612 that's close to my heart. Have you heard that one? Yeah, it's funky. I'm funky it's funky as shit. Baby. I, I was really torn um, because I, I was thinking, uh, uh, you know, James Brown. 
Yeah. I wanted to show the aliens James Brown. Right. Or I wanted to show the aliens uh, maybe Parliament. You know, give them a little taste of the extraterrestrial brothers. Dude. You know? Yeah. Uh, something maybe off Mothership Connection. Absolutely, know? bro. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I, I went with Reverend Horton Heat. There's a little bit of everything in Texas. Huh. Because I, I wanted the aliens to know that, you know, there's a little bit of a- everything in Texas, yeah. right? right? Right, right. Everything is absolutely bigger in Texas, right? right? Even the universe. Like, I don't, I don't know where the aliens well, are from. I don't know. But, if you look at on a uh, map, the Texas is bigger than the universe. If I, I, I'm pretty photo. sure it is. I'm pretty sure yeah. it is. Like, I know the universe is big, but... The universe in Texas is is even bigger. Yeah, right. I mean, it just has to be. It has that's, to be that's, bigger. That's the that's Those the, are the rules. rules, right? Um, uh, there's a there's a little bit of everything in Texas. And there's a whole lot of Texas in me, yeah. and uh, you know, it's it's big enough that I'm, I'm willing to share with the extraterrestrials. Oh, okay, well, that's very nice yeah. of you. Yeah, I wouldn't mind if the ETs were Texans, dude. You guys want to come here and be Texans? Okay, I think that might be the best American state to start with is Texas. Yeah, go for it. You know? Yeah. And, and like adopt some cool, you know, so like some some super South Texas accent where you're talking like you have molasses dripping out of your mouth. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I mean we have a lot of uh, crazy events that happen here in Texas. Yeah, so we know that they're totally aware of Texas. Yeah, you know, and it makes me think like if an alien were to talk, man, what kind of accent would you want it to want it to have? We definitely want it to be from the friendly state. A Texas state. There yeah, you go. That's right. right. All right. So, uh, <laughs> let's see. Uh, that, that was a lot. <laughs> fucking lot. Jonathan, uh, Earth Girls Are Crazy. I don't know what that's on. Earth Girls is. Are Easy. Oh, easy. Earth Girls Are Easy. I'm actually going to have to look that up. Yeah, I don't know what that is. So Earth Girls it? Are Easy. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look it up right now. Okay, what, we'll what's play. the next one? Yeah. Oh, so my brother, he goes... <laughs> Scatman by Scatman John. Do you know what yes. that song is? Their ship would start to like smoke and like, <laughs> yeah. and, like freak out. They wouldn't know what to do. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's that's actually how they made the Roswell crash is they played that song they played the the Scat Man, dude. That's and that shit was. just crashed. <laughs> Uh, okay let's see yeah okay you already said your reverend horton heat one yep but man that was that was a great prompt great question to to start that out with dude earth girls are easy <laughs> let's listen to all it. right earth girls the microphone over here. is this is this a movie earth <laughs> girls are easy uh, a disco scene what earth girls are easy movie clip uh, makeover. You're, are you trying to watch porn on my internet, dude? No, dude. Oh my A song? God. Maybe Earth Girls Are Easy song? That's the only one that I didn't recognize. The, 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 the Earth Girls... <laughs> I, I don't think this is a song, dude. I think he's setting you up. An, an error occurred. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's get past it. Good try. Good that's try. Hilarious. <laughs> oh, God damn it. All right. Well, uh, that's that's all we have for Facebook. Um, uh, shh. <laughs> Should we should we gloss over it or? <laughs> uh, I I have to know because this the the image is insane. Are we listening to an ad right now? No, not at all. What is is this? A... Hey, I have never seen this. What is this? Earth Girls Are Easy. I think it's a movie. What? Hey, that's the chick from. Uh... Beetlejuice. From a- the the chick from Angel. She's an angel. Oh, and an angel. And Buffy. <laughs> I don't know, dude. Oh, she's from Buffy, not Angel. Well, both, maybe. She's definitely from Beetlejuice. <laughs> this girl right here? Yeah. I don't know what her name is. Uh, gotta find the song. What is she? Is she doing whippets? Whoa. What are these bird people, dude? This is an alien. Hey, I bet you this is where uh, uh, old boy got his idea for the avians. From this fucking movie, dude. I don't know. All right, well, we we tried. We tried. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I found it. Okay, here we go. talking about I thought I opened it <laughs> <laughs> all right
right, guys. This is the song they, the aliens come by and they're like, all right, these fucking, they're idiots. Let's come back in a thousand years. <laughs> That's hilarious, I just dude. just the jiggle. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> well, that was all for Facebook. <laughs> Yeah, dude. All right, let's get it. Let's get it going, dude. I'm too excited. All right, I know yeah, people are listening absolutely. to this and like, you get it. All right, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, we have a uh, Gary Voorhees and PJ Hughes. Uh, they're Tic Tac witnesses. Um, Gary was on the USS Princeton. Uh, they're all former. Uh, and PJ Hughes was on the Nimitz. Everybody knows what the Nimitz is. The Tic Tac Toe incidents. Wait, the Tic Tac <laughs> incidents. <laughs> That incident, you know, when everybody played tic tac toe, that game sucks. <laughs> really? If you know what you're doing, it does suck for the other. Well, for the other person, if they don't know what they're doing, if you don't know what you're doing during tic tac toe, you're dumb. Yeah, what I do is I like to switch from X's to O's mid mid game. Mid game, really confuse the. You got to confuse the opponent. Yeah, that's, that's all a mind game. Hell yeah! All right, dude. Well, let's get into this. All right, well, what's up, guys? Uh, thanks for uh, coming on the UFO Garage podcast tonight. How are y'all doing? I'm doing pretty damn good. You, PJ? Doing good. Can't complain. Hell yeah. Awesome. Hell yeah. Awesome, man. Well, hey, we're super stoked that uh, that you guys could, could make it tonight. I mean, uh, Gary, thanks for uh, reaching out to us and, uh, you know, it it all started with a little correction, right? That's yeah. that's how it all started. Which which we we totally uh we love it. You know what I'm saying? We're we're in this to to kind of to kind of learn and and uh you know and uh, just kind of get this information out and then uh you know and then thanks for for uh you know bringing PJ along with you as well, man. I mean this is gonna be this is gonna be pretty interesting. I'm I'm super excited about it. Yeah, well, me PJ, Jason, and. Uh and kevin we're all pretty tight so we tend to we tend to kind of hop on together whenever we can yeah that's super awesome so so you were like hey i'm gonna be on this podcast pj what are you doing tonight Is that- uh, he, he just said he said he was available so i was like all right <laughs> Hell yeah that's awesome dude that's awesome well uh, dude gary i gotta i gotta know you know, just out of my own curiosity, how, how did you hear about the show, man? Uh, to be dead honest with you, by accident, because <laughs> awesome. I was uh, I was looking I was looking because uh, I'll be honest with you, my uh, my knowledge on the UFOlogy is uh, well lacking because you know I just had this thing that happened to me, but all it's been is a is a is a hey, let's have some beers, and then you know four beers in, let me tell you a story. <laughs> yes hell yes. yes that's how i mean that's, then, how, uh, that's how it starts man well so i was looking for ufo podcasts on uh and you know you guys came up so i was like all right i'll listen to these guys these guys look like you're... and then i was like oh my god these guys are fucking awesome <laughs> <laughs> yes man yeah well that's awesome I- i'm glad that uh that uh you know you enjoy the podcast man i mean you know we we started this all out you know we, we were talking about this right before we started the show you know we were like man hey maybe we could maybe we can get our neighbor on or something crazy like that like when we first started the show now it's like oh okay cool now kind of look at where we are now we're, you know we're talking to legit people that <laughs> in, were in the u.s navy like what yeah exactly man <laughs> exactly so i mean you know we're, we're, we're pretty stoked about it uh make sure all you guys listening make sure uh, if you if you check it out on iheart radio or youtube or anything like that man uh you know click the subscribe button and uh so, give, give us a thumbs up you know it, it makes it easier for people like gary to find the show <laughs> 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 well, I blasted it across my Twitter and my Facebook today, so oh, may, awesome, may have dude. a couple yeah. extra views tonight. Oh, awesome, dude! That's Man, awesome. so you were saying that you're you're going on Clyde Lewis after this, correct? Yeah, I guess uh, you know Dave Beatty that did the uh, that did the video for us. He uh, he's a good friend of ours too, and he he reached out to, to us to see if there was anybody that could go on there tonight. I'm guessing they must have had somebody cancel. <laughs> Dude, that is so awesome. So, like Clyde Lewis is uh is kind of my radio hero. Like I don't know if you know this man, but he is like one of my biggest influences like to kind of hop on the mic, you know? Uh I absolutely love his show. I've been listening to it for years. Um and dude, that that's super cool. So uh when you go on there, 
Tell yeah, them uh, Ben and Joe said what's up. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Tell us, what's up. I'll give you a, a sly little plug. <laughs> nice, dude. You gotta, nice, be, you gotta be coy about it. You know? <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just got done doing a uh, UFO garage. Man, those guys are nuts over there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, dude. Awesome, man. Well, you know, our show is uh, is definitely probably a little bit of a different format than any <laughs> any other thing that you're probably going to, you know, be on uh, or have been on. We uh, we say dude a whole lot. Um, occasionally, we, we tell dick jokes and yeah. talk about butts. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, we like to have fun and, and we like the information, dude. So, you know, uh, I guess getting started out, man, uh, let's start with you, Gary. Uh, just kind of give us a little run down who you are what you did and uh you know how it's going now all right well about now probably everybody that's listening has probably already heard of the nimitz event with the the tic tac event whatever you've heard it about and uh i'm one of the uh four sailors that came out in uh to uh back up uh fravor when he came out publicly about it to talk about it and uh Favor was the, uh, the initial pilot that uh, was interviewed to, that broke the story, or at least rebroke the story in 2017. Um, and then uh, Senior Chief Day or, or Kevin Day, that everybody knows him died now. He came, he came, he reached out to me and asked me if I, you know, wanted to talk about it, and I came out to help, you know, in support of him, and then. And then uh, PJ came around. I think you what 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 you watched you watched the Nimitz encounters, and then then reached out to uh, Dave Beatty, right? Correct. I'm late to the party. <laughs> <laughs> well, better 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 late than never because we we love the guy. So so and then uh, but I was an Aegis computer technician and CEC technician on the Aegis missile cruiser, the USS Princeton. We were. Uh, what that means, it's a lot of big fancy words for saying all the computers that ran all those systems and all those little cool little stations that they were w- watching the radars on and stuff. Yeah, those are all my babies. Nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and then, uh, and then the systems that uh, share all that information amongst all the ships to make this one big, huge map of the battlefield, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's the CC system. That was also my baby. So, <laughs> I had a pretty in-depth view of what was going on. <laughs> that's awesome, dude. That's awesome. <clears throat> now, my buddy PJ here, I mean, he's... Uh, kind of envy him he was a deck on the nimitz working on the hawkeye which i'll let him take it from there yeah yeah go, go ahead pj your turn buddy yeah <clears throat> oh since gary just you know threw me under the bus right there <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, i was a avionics technician um i had a job relatively similar to gary's except i did it on a hawkeye which is a um, a mini AWACS, an airborne early warning platform it's a funky looking prop airplane with a big old satellite dish on top um, yeah, yeah. I'm sure you've seen. I'm sure you're sure you've seen it, especially on. <laughs> is it, is it the one that looks like, like, like a big UFO <laughs> on the top of it? Is that the one I'm thinking of? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yes, go. it's got a big UFO landing platform. <laughs> on it. Hell yeah! It's been in front of our faces the whole time. <laughs> exactly. That's what it really was. We just we got to keep that secret. Yeah, that's what it was, man. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah, sorry about throwing you on the bus, but you're always too damn quiet, PJ. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> well, I'm glad you explained because uh, you know, uh, you know, other than just being a cool ass name, like what the Hawkeye actually is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think a lot of people realize that that's what it's that's what it's called. You know, they're just like, oh yeah, yeah it's the the plane with the, the the giant satellite dish on top of it. They, you they know? should change the name to plane with the giant satellite dish on top. <laughs> I wonder if they. I wonder how many channels they get. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All of them, from what I understand. <laughs> the, squad, yeah. the squadron I was in at the time. Uh, it was called the World Famous Wall Bangers, and it was the same squadron I was in when all this stuff happened. And if you look at the beginning of, not the beginning, but in the Hunt for Red October, they actually heavily feature my airplane, and it was an air from VW 117, the World Famous Wall Bangers. Oh wow, oh, Wall Banger! That is awesome, dude. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
That's a cool movie. And we're the only spot named after an alcoholic drink, so another story. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, dude, that's awesome. The Harvey Wallbanger. Yeah. (laughs) I feel like, I don't know what that is, but I feel like it's one of those, uh, you know, when you empty out the mats at the end of the night and pour it into a a drink and and you take a shot of it. I don't know what you call that. (laughs) It's something like that. (laughs) It's got uh, tequila and vodka and a little bit of Bud Light, maybe some lime juice. (laughs) I think technically it is a it's a screwdriver with um it's got a third ingredient other than vodka and orange juice. I can't remember what that third ingredient is. <laughs> That's awesome. My uh my brother uh he used to work on on U2s and uh in the Bridge of Spies movie with Tom Hanks, uh that's his U2 in the uh, in the movie that he worked on. So that's pretty cool. No. Yeah, that's super cool. I didn't know that, dude. That's yeah. dope. Yeah. So <laughs> now he 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 works on the A10. Now he's a warthog guy. All right. So, yeah. Wow. He really enjoys it. <laughs> that, that's yeah, warhogs are pretty badass too. Yeah, they. That's a fucking hell of a gun on that thing. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. He he. You know, I was like, dude, so how how is it working on the U2 compared to the warthog? And he was like, well. U2 was cool. It's just such a pain in the ass. There's a lot of red tape that goes along with it. The Warthog is badass because you could just slap shit on it and let it ride. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, no, I think we lost PJ there. Uh-oh. Donde PJ? No, I'm still here. Oh, oh okay, cool, cool. Oh, okay. I, awesome. got a, I got a message. My bad. Um, <laughs> I got a message on my computer. I'm, I'm new to Skype, so I, we're, we're still... Oh, okay. If it, in the bottom right, there's like a little... Uh, little message conversation thing that you open up and you can kind of side chat with people and you know that way uh oh, like, here we go. like like when you're so, <laughs> oh, you so when you're like bullsh- yeah so <laughs> like when you're bullshit and you can like look shit up and like link it in there so you sound like you know what you're saying <laughs> oh my god that's awesome we're gonna need that for about 50 percent of this web or this podcast so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah ex- excuse our military ignorance right <laughs> oh, totally, uh, no. totally, totally know what that acronym means yeah. <laughs> yeah, my whole family is uh my whole family is military. Um and and I was into Alice Cooper. So <laughs> that's kind of it kind of worked out strange for me. <laughs> well, it just so happened I was raised on him, so <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Awesome, man. That's cool, dude. So say so, yeah, I have some uh some trailer roots. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely, man. Uh, so the so the Nimitz was the aircraft carrier, correct? And the Princeton was uh, like a missile cruiser. Is that is that right? Yeah. So what they, what what it would be is uh, we were a guided missile cruiser, and so what we actually did with the carrier is we were, we were referred to as flight guard. So we were like the ship that was responsible for protecting the carrier. The carrier's got a lot of armaments, but it's mostly because of the aircraft and stuff like that. Yeah. But a the, the, a guided missile cruiser and a guided missile destroyer, those two ships, shy of the big boomers with all the nuclear missiles, they're the most heavily armed ships in the Navy. So basically, whether it's a short-range aerial or surface... <laughs> We can pretty much destroy anything under like Mach five coming at the carrier. Oh damn! Damn. <laughs> it's uh. That's well, that's quick. what I mean, that's, that's what all these. Well, we were uh, we were designed to actually counter um, the Russians. Uh, what is it? The what's the name of that Mach two missile, PJ? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, the, the, the big, the big Ruski. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a Russian missile, and it was it goes mock speed. It's like basically a a sh- at a target and hope it because it's so fast. God, damn. <laughs> you know the Russians they well the Russians always got simple things like you ever seen one of their battleships? It's like it's got more guns than I've seen on any ship ever, and it's like okay, we're just gonna shoot everything we have at it and hope something hits. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's crazy. Sounds like one of those uh, Men in Black uh, guns with like. Two, three different uh muzzles on it it's got three different guns on it <laughs> oh, <Exactly>. right <laughs> yeah like way way too over the top <laughs> dude wasn't there a, a yeah why kill yeah <laughs> wasn't there a uh um a light aircraft carrier called the princeton back in the day it, it didn't it recover yeah it, uh, it actually uh it was called a gator freighter i think i think it was uh one of the uh the the, the old 
deck ones, uh, aircraft carriers. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But yeah, and it actually, we just, I just saw an article the other day, somebody linked me on Facebook that that ship actually ran into an unknown aircraft in, uh, in I think it was Korea, I think it was. What? Is that what I said, PJ? Yes. So it's like, uh, yeah, it, it had it had an official report of running into unknown aircraft in, in off the coast of Korea. Whoa. Dude, that's so, cool. dude, I mean, like, so it, other than this particular experience, I mean, being on being on naval ships, I mean, it, it, did y'all ever encounter anything else crazy? I mean, I would assume being out in the middle of the ocean, you see, you know, there's either nothing or there's probably something crazy, right? I mean. The two, the only other two crazy things that have ever happened is is uh, having to climb the mast in a typhoon oh, <laughs> in the South China Sea, and then uh, when you, uh, and then uh, probably like bioluminescent water, which is always fucking crazy cool. Whoa. Is that just due to like the algae or something? Yeah, it's when they say every once in a while, like when you go through uh, through the water and and when it, when all that out blooming, it's just like the it's like this huge blue green wake going across the freaking ocean as you go through it. It's like the coolest thing you've ever seen. Man, dang, it's that's like some a, some fern gully shit. Dude. Yeah, fern gully, you're like <laughs> Avatar, dude. That sounds that is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> how about how about I'll you? How about you, PJ? Yeah. I'll do Gary one better. If you, if you ever look at the picture of an aircraft carrier, you've got a couple elevators down one side of the ship, same side as the island. And the front corner, there's kind of an angle on the deck where it goes way out to the front. There's a pole right there. It's called a nav pole. It's got a bunch of stinking navigation stuff for the ship. And I'm sitting there one day working, and it's pouring, raining. And next thing you know, I get out of my airplane, start shutting everything down. Bright flash, very loud bang. Damn thing got struck by lightning about Whoa. 10 feet. <laughs> very, very big flash. Yeah, that'll, 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 uh, <laughs> <laughs> that'll make you pucker. <laughs> it definitely. Damn. Make you pucker. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. So, PJ, dude, walking around that aircraft carrier, man, how many times did you get lost on that thing? <laughs> um, I mean, from the Nimitz to. So the Reagan, they're all almost identical with, with small variations. So once you learn your way around one, you'll know your way around all of them. Ah. But uh, my first time out, I think I was lost the entire time. Yeah. <laughs> to give you a hint how big these ships are, I, I had to go over to the Nimitz to help fix their fire control computers a couple of times. My very first time on the ship, I was two hours late for a meeting because <laughs> I straight up got lost. <laughs> and oh, I, and which, 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 which worse is I'm all try, I'm just going through bulkheads and heading in the direction that I need to go. I said, I pull open this bulkhead and there's just a nothing but a sea of women in their birthing. And I'm like, shit. And they're like, you have no idea. You're you're by they're mind. like, no, you yeah. Wait you, yeah, they were like, you have no idea where you're going. You, I'm trying to get to so 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 so. All right, well, hurry up and hurry up and come through here. And then they started yelling, "Man on deck, man on deck!" and just dragging me through their birthing, <laughs> Pull, pulling you by your ear or something. Oh my god, that sounds like a scene on Porky's, man. <laughs> Holy shit! Oh, that's hilarious. So yeah, you need like you basically need a compass on the inside of one of those aircraft carriers. Too much metal compass ain't gonna work. Oh, it's oh. Gonna, yeah. It's just circles. <laughs> this is even, useless. Even if you had a map. <laughs> well, you gotta remember, there's so there's so many decks down and so many decks up that I mean, there's always an alternate route for everywhere, and it's so easy to get turned around. Yeah, yeah, I bet. Damn. Damn. Yeah. I've always wondered: is it easy to sl- sleep out on the ocean? Well, with a boat. That oh day. hell yeah. Yeah. Oh, dude, that's the best part about it. Oh. You know, especially if you get just like, like the heavy seas kind of suck, but like there's this one sea where it just kind of rocks just a little bit. You're just like a baby in a cradle. Just, oh, it's such good sleep. Yes, that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. So, guys, I mean, before before this experience, did did you guys ever have – an interest in the in the subject at all or was it just something that kind of blindsided you and you were like well here we are it's it's never that i was into it i wasn't into it nearly to the depth i'm at now and 
I still wouldn't really consider myself into it. Right. Um, well, well we're, I've, we're, I've gotten more into it now, but I mean, I was always an X Files fan, if that counts. Absolutely. <laughs> but, absolutely. But you know, it's it's you know, we I didn't have anything weird happen to me prior to that, so it's it, it was. Uh, but it's it's definitely kind of made me look up a little bit more often. Happen. Man, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, being an X Files fan, I mean, dude, like, I've seen them all, right? Uh, and some of the stuff that, uh, some of the stuff that we've gotten into and kind of read about, like, man, that show is, uh, it, it, it sounds, it seems pretty spot on. It's, it's kind of crazy. I mean, it, it's weird, like, man. Like- I mean, with this subject, like, some of the craziest stuff you would just, you know, it's, it's like, oh, that's bullshit, right? But then, you know, you know, I was listening to you, Gary, in one of one of your interviews, and and you're like, you know, like some of these guys, you know, they they know the documents, the numbers, you know, the the sentence and the quote and all that stuff, and where you can find all this information. And you know, you said, you know, yourself, you know, like I, I, I'm not that into it, right? But you know, some of these guys, you know, me and Ben, we've been reading through some of this this stuff, man, and it's it's. It's crazy. It is crazy. I, I definitely see why. <laughs> you know, well, some of these guys, like like I said in that interview, I mean, it's just they are down for the details. I Me, mean, I'm cool. I'm in for a real cool story, and it's like hear what these people have been through. You know, <laughs> it's yeah. like yeah, give me the give me the documentary, and I'll watch that. Don't don't give me 15 pages to read. Hell yeah! Hell yeah! <laughs> yeah dude. It's a lot of reading. A lot of reading involved. Uh, give me some pictures. Yep. Yep. Like, I think the like one of the the bigger documents that have recently come out is the the Admiral Wilson document, right? And how you know he he contacted uh, a, a private company that was a, a crash retrieval program, and they wouldn't let Admiral Wilson have you know access to any of this stuff, and you know they they ended up taking it to federal court, and then federal court was like. Sorry, dude. Like you can't have access to any of this stuff. Like uh, it's 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 nuts. It's insane. But you know, in in the document, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, like that gets real real sketchy because he doesn't really like that's that's like when Fravor came out and was like trying to trying to like kind of say that we uh, like he would have known if like anything like that happened because of how high rank he was. And I'm like, guy, it doesn't matter how high rank you are if you ain't got need to know. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Hey. You know, even like you know, even the president. I mean, that guy's just a temporary employee. Like people always think, oh, well, the president would know. Yeah. No, he probably wouldn't know shit. More than likely. Yeah. <laughs> It's either that or it's like when the presidents are like, this is what I was thinking about when that one, uh, there's a lady candidate that's out right now that says she's going to get to the bottom of it, right? And I'm thinking to myself, yeah, she's going to get to the bottom of it until they actually brief her and then she realizes, shit, I can't tell the public that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's exactly, yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. I, I hate when uh, people use that like in their campaigns or like, and I'm going to, I'm going to release UFO information. It's like, man. Well, I'm sure. All right, I'll vote for you. Let's see what you're gonna do. Yeah, do it. Yeah, I mean, I dare you. <laughs> yeah, they've been trying to do that since the '40s, man. Yeah. There's no way. I'm, yeah. Somebody should get on our website and say, "I triple dog dare you to do it." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. We we uh we won't hear from you again, right? <laughs> uh, so hey, I'm just I, I kind of want to ask both of you guys this kind of question. Uh, it doesn't matter who goes first, but. Uh, you, it, given that line of, of questioning, like, you know, or question about releasing information, and Gary, you just mentioned, well, until she gets to the, or he gets to the bottom of it and realizes they can't tell the public, do you have any kind of idea of like what it could be? Cause I kind of lend to, I kind of am, am, am pushed in the direction. It has something to do with like the collapse of our economy due to this new technology, this inner energy kind of situation. Do you have any thoughts on that? We'll go ahead, PJ, because mine's going to be a little bit longer. Well, you you take it. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So (laughs) I've had a long time to kind of try to figure out what these damn things are. And so I've got actually... How long is your list? (laughs) Well... (laughs) So I've got 81 different possibilities right now. All right. (laughs) But... Let's give you your top five. you got to remember the... I, I, I got a top eight that I, that I narrowed it down to, and you're going to get a, basically a preview of my uh, talk at the uh, at the next convention because oh, yeah. you know you got to have something to talk about. Right. Since everybody's heard the damn story, you got to have something. So these are my tech series on like exactly what these things could be. Oh, yeah. So 
the uh, one, one of the first things I thought, well, maybe what happens if like there was a past civilization that was crazy advanced, right? Right now, you turn on the Weather Channel every day to find out what the weather is going on in the world. What happens if we get so advanced that we've got drones just rolling around the world, finding out every information about everything in the world? And then reporting it back to us. And what if we had a big, huge network of drones that just do that, just monitor the Earth? Well, what happens if that tech from an advanced civilization that was on the Earth prior to us survives somehow? And like little remnants of like these like these little nodes just like somehow survived under the ocean and just basically make these things and repair them and, and just keep on going it doesn't know that it's not supposed to do that anymore but it just keeps on going that's how it's programmed I love well that. you know it, it's just tech so guess what eventually fails so all of a sudden one of these things fail right over roswell crash and they say what's on the inside is biotech you know so they think they got like you know aliens but in reality it's just like an advanced biotech running this freaking drone <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. He doesn't you know, know what what to, what year it is. He's just like, well, this is my job. Yeah, he doesn't care what year it is. He's just got to do, you know? <laughs> you know, so all of a sudden we get a hold of this tech and we're just like, you know, during that time we're probably like burning off half the circuitry just trying to figure out what it is. <laughs> you know, all of a sudden, you know, they get a you know, they get a couple of hits on, you know, something that works still. And you're like, oh, well, you know, this still works. So let's not disassemble it. Yeah. You know, and then all of a sudden, like later on, now that we're getting into, you know, uh, you know, quantum quantum mechanics and quantum computers and stuff like that. All of a sudden, maybe we're starting to actually learn more about this stuff. And maybe that's what these little jumps in tech are, is them just like kind of holding this holding this tech back a little bit just kind of just letting it jump every every i mean because we went from like the razor phone which we used to be remember the razor it used well, to be just like yeah. this Hell crazy yeah. badass phone yeah. i had the titanium razor i thought i was so cool <laughs> 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 i had that one too man oh. yeah and, and then they came out with the you know the blackberry kind of came out at that time but nobody really fucked with it because it, it was a just like a super it. Well, dude, it had a, it, the BlackBerry was like a super geek fucking phone, and it was too pain, too much pain in the ass to use. Yeah. Plus, it was crazy expensive. It was even more expensive than the Razor. But then all of a sudden, from that to the iPhone, yeah, a touch screen. I mean, it I mean, that's just a massive jump in tech, dude. dude yeah. And then. You know, and that's just the cell phone industry. We're not even going to talk about like the medical industries and all the other industries that seem to just have these, you know, jumps. And then like you know, this tech industry, you know, these tech people that you no idea who they were prior to this one thing, and then, boom, you know, <laughs> overnight. <laughs> boom. Yep. All right. So Steve Jobs. So turtlenecks. That, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Who knows? Maybe maybe he was actually not a genius, and they just gave him the tech to sell. Dude, <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> He just talked right, to the right so, people. So then this kind of piggybacks onto the last one, but it may be just, we just actually developed this tech ourselves. But since the forties, we've been doing like a tech cartel where they don't, you know, like where, where De beer did with the diamonds. They don't want to release too much of it out faster than the community can consume it. Right. You know, cause I mean, really your profits are only going to be maximized by the consumption of the private market. So, why 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 waste it all by flooding the market with crazy amounts of tech that's a really great point yeah and then of course you know one of the more famous ones that everybody likes is alien current technology you know it could be just current alien technology and we just happen to get our hands on some of it or they're just current aliens and they're just chilling like oh shit they can see us now fuck uh, yeah. well we better uh you know <laughs> yeah um and then, of course, there's uh, the fourth. The, the, fir the fourth one is old alien tech. So instead of this kind of kind of goes a little bit along the same lines as the past civilization tech, but instead of being like from this planet, it's like say old aliens came here, seeded the planet, helped genetically engineer everything. We we develop as the dominant species, and then they kind of just guide us along. Um, so in this theory, the they, they don't have faster than light travel. So 
they basically leave drones to monitor us behind to monitor their 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 projects and experiments and then they start heading back either off to the next stop or back to their home point you know like maybe like a uh, like a science expedition expedition or even just a uh, you know exploration expedition you know so they just kind of leave drones behind just to monitor the situation and that's what we're seeing all the time you know and then that would also indicate why there's so much text in the past about people talking to sky people talking to yeah, you know yeah, you know yeah. we'll, 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 we'll quote the crazy haired guy ancient aliens <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yes i don't know so, they're you know, aliens <laughs> yes exactly i love, uh, I love so, that guy by the way Georgia, we gotta get Georgia to like that guy. Uh, he's gonna be at that next uh that next thing that we're going to i think most of the ancient alien guys are going to be there ufo con uh, this is the uh, the the contact what is in the it? desert. In a, or what? Con, the contact in the desert. Oh, yeah. Matter of fact, oh. our whole all of uh, most of the UAP expedition will be there, which is basically made up of just me, JP. Uh, we got deep facade. We've got uh, got a whole bunch of actual legitimate people that like are super smart. <laughs> pretty awesome dude well, yeah. when you see Giorgio there tell him we emailed him and he needs to email us back <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think he lost my email too <laughs> that's awesome yeah dude so you got your uh, your doctor scientist shirt and you're gonna wear it out there right <laughs> oh I so am dude I'm gonna be just walking around with that shit hell yeah. <laughs> hell yeah. <laughs> yeah so 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 with that situation, it's like old alien tech, you know, so they just left that shit here and sometimes it fails. Sometimes we get some of it and we develop it and reverse engineer it and move on, you know, and then, uh, and then the rest of the theories are a little bit more out there. So it's just like, cause I'm a firm believer that everything is, everything is possible, just highly improbable. Yeah. <laughs> right? yep. Or yep. Nothing, or nothing, nothing is, nothing is impossible, just highly improbable. So in the next theory, it's a uh, parallel dimension tech. So multiverse theory, meaning that it's not even from like another world anywhere, but you know, based uh it's just in a parallel universe that happened to develop the tech to move over to the next universe before we did because if this theory is correct that means that there's an infinite amount of universes and it, it, it starts to get mind-boggling so we won't get oh, crazy absolutely. into it yeah, but, yeah. Oh, i love that right. yeah but when you have an infinite amount of situations that means there's always a version that's a crazy more advanced than you there's always a version that already has developed the technology to go between dimensions and there's always going to be a situation where anything you think of right now all of a sudden it just pops into existence on, in that in that situation like manifesting yeah, so yeah yeah so i mean that, that kind of that kind of starts to get kind of borderline philosophy oh, I, I love <laughs> that i love that that that's definitely my my bag for sure that the the possibility of I mean that's maybe that's why Bigfoot is is blurry, right? He's that, that's he's figured out how to go transdimensional, right? There's some kind of tech, or or he might be blurry because it's a bunch of people running through the woods, scared of shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Man, I, um, that first. I mean, I don't know, I, or I don't know what number you were on. I, I, I didn't uh, interrupt you. We're on we're on we're on five right now. <laughs> <laughs> all right so the uh number six is uh the classic time travel theory that it's not any aliens whatsoever but it's us coming back to try to fix something <laughs> yeah yeah I've, you know i've been thinking about something that kind of goes along with that lately is that um you know that it kind of lends uh this uh idea of us trying to to cover up the fact that there's this tech out there is is that it is us from the future and we just we we went down a bad path so we're trying to prevent ourselves from going down this bad path so we're like hey you know we did this once and everybody knew about this technology and it was available to the public but we basically killed our whole civilization and it's just like 14 of us left yeah so they're coming back you know one at a time and saying like Hey, change this at, at this date. So they're like going back and just changing little things along the way, so that we don't actually, 
you know, kill off our whole ex- uh, existence. Yeah, as a species. Even even like Penniston or Pen Pen. I think it's Penniston from the the Rendlesham case. Yeah, Pen- that's Penniston. Yeah. When he when he you know he he touched this craft and he he supposedly had the download right. We know about the binary code that he wrote down in this book. Um, but later on in years after you know really mulling this over, you know he believes that it's not a- a- aliens. It's it's actually us from the future. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's I mean it's yeah, a great theory. It, it, it's crazy, like when something like this happens to you, that you know shit that just rolls around through your head. Like, I got this idea for a, a fictional story, and it basically it's based off of like, you know, we start doing uh, you know biohacking with like CRISPR and stuff like that, and we figure out a way to uh, reduce the length of or to stop telomeres from shortening, basically making us yeah. immortal. Yeah. You know, so, you know, so, I mean, there's been a lot of TV shows and a couple of things that have kind of touched on this in the, in the past. I just actually watched something new that was, that kind of got on. Well, basically, instead of like being able to fix it, they figure out that the only way they're going to fix their genetic issues is by letting the species re evolve. So, all, so this one scientist gets this idea. Well, I tell you what, I found this like almost dead rock in this other galaxy, and if we shoot amino acids and all the stuff like that, we can guide its evolution, and we will get it, give it a genetic memory, so that our our c- civilization's not lost. Holy you know, so shit! Na- that yeah. is awesome. So <laughs> I would, I would yeah, watch so, that movie. Yeah. <clears throat> so, like, I started off, and I'll just give you a little tidbit of what it is because eventually i actually want to write it as a book is this you know basically these guys are hurtling through space and they find this dead plant civilization and it's just nothing but ruins well they find an energy signature and it's it's basically this scientist's computer and so it's got all of the files of everything that's happened since the the cure which is what they called this vaccination that that basically kept you immortal forever um, well, the side effect of this vaccination that made you immortal is that you became uh, 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 infertile. You couldn't you couldn't sterile, reproduce yeah. anymore. Sterile, yeah, yeah, sterile. You know, so then all of a sudden, you know, obviously people start realizing that you know, fuck, we're all sterile because they never planned on it getting out. So, ah. you know, it, it 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 was we'll just say some hippies were like, nah, man, you got this cure and you're holding <laughs> it hostage. And, old, you know, da 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 da. So they. So they break into his lab and they steal it and they then they like mass produce it and like just give it to everybody because technically it cures cancer, but oh, but there's one in every ten people basically just straight up die from it. Oh, damn. <laughs> damn, damn, <I> <laughs> you know, <laughs> which, I mean, which yeah. you know because yeah, so it's like due to the like the downfalls of it, you know, it, they're not using it, they're not giving it to the public because it's so dangerous. But now, so by the time, but they didn't realize it's not one in 10, it's 50% of the people that take it just die. Damn. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so these, these by, so these, these people that, that consider themselves like heroes to the people that they're going to cure all the cancer in the world didn't realize that this was going to happen and literally kill half the planet. And then the other half end up being sterile because, Almost everybody takes this damn drug or this vaccination. And then the people that don't do it and end up, you know, staying mortal, I mean, after a couple of hundred years dead. So now you're just left with all these people that can't reproduce. Damn. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever heard this theory, but listening to your story, it kinda it kinda made me think of it. Uh so the the Zetas or the Greys, they they started to basically, you know, become so advanced that their evolution cycle wasn't wasn't natural anymore. And they got to a kind of a point to where they also couldn't reproduce. But the thing that happened was technologically, they could only advance so far. And so there wasn't this natural, um, you know, elevation of the species and they couldn't go any further. And once they figured out, you know, how to travel this space and time, basically, they found us. And we because supposedly we kind of have like a similar genetic makeup. They have like one more strand in their DNA. They come here and that's why they start taking our DNA is because they're trying to 
to uh, reverse the process of them being this highly technological, you know, species and kind of start back from the middle to where they messed up. So they're, they're kind of going backwards. And that's why they, they take our, our DNA now because, you know, they, they also can't reproduce, you know, so there's, there's not making any more of them. Um, and they want that, you know, that genetic material for, for that, you know, when that specific purpose. So, yeah. Yeah, I actually heard that from one of your old podcasts. <laughs> that was the first time I actually heard anything about the, the Zetas. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Hell and, yeah. And, you know, our... Been, our, our so uh, you guys got to keep know. it up. I, I, I need you guys to fill me in on a lot of this stuff. <laughs> yeah, dude. And then us, you know, during, you know, once we discovered the, the you know, the nuclear bomb... You know the atom bomb. Now we're smashing atoms and creating little black holes and this and that. And and you know we're just doctor scientists, dude. Yeah, so, dude. you know what I'm saying. <laughs> so you know a lot of times we're speculating, but you know apparently these 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 you know these weapons, these machines, you know when they explode, there's a small time. There's a small like a very short amount of time where it actually opens a portal. And so we're opening these portals for these things to come in. And so when we started, you know, that's why all this stuff like in the 40s started happening like crazy. They started showing up. These crafts started showing up and, and we started, you know, like, oh, well, they're they're aliens, right? Yeah, it might it might have been like like it might have been like a damn beacon for all we know. Exactly. Exactly. And it just kind of like it woke them up and it was like, "Whoa. Hey, so we can go here." They've opened these little portals, you know, and exactly it it affects it affects uh, you know space and time, even like d- dimensionally, like you were talking about, like it ripples through these dimensions and through this time, and they're able to pick that signature up. Yeah, I think that would probably be one of the strongest pulses of power that would come off this planet. I mean, shy of like us blasting uh, high frequency RF in every direction in our solar system. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> but Definitely. I mean, but but now if, if most of these species have moved to like, uh, you know, communications based off of quantum entanglement, you know, they're probably not even looking for these frequencies, you know, so, I mean, if they're, and if they're communicating us with quantum entanglement, we've got no clue, you know, I have a feeling that, you know, that communication we've all been looking for is just on a tech that we don't know yet. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. I think one of the, the, the best things I ever heard was, uh, when it comes to this subject is uh, nobody actually knows. Nobody will ever know and the only time you'll know is when you die. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, like it's kind of like one of the lines from uh, Hitchhiker's Guide where he's like He's guys like I always thought there was something going on. He goes, "Oh no, that's just healthy paranoia. It happens to everybody in the universe." In the universe, <laughs> I love the actual that chances of you ever finding out what's actually going on is zero to nil. <laughs> yeah, yep. dude, that's one of my favorite movies. I love that movie. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah, it's so good. So, so no, I've got one last theory, and it's just the standard uh, current alien civilization living here underground and under our oceans. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, there I mean, there very well could be an entire civilization living here that we have no idea about, and we wouldn't know because, well, why the hell would we? Yeah. yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. I mean, Admiral Byrd talked about it, right, in his adventure to, uh, to the Arctics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Antarctic, the, the Great Antarctic. Uh, what do they call it? Uh, crap! I, I read about this one. Uh, this is one I one I do know. And they basically went to Antarctica, got their asses handed to them, and then hauled ass back to South America for yep. for refueling. <laughs> yeah, they were like, "What are you guys doing back so soon?" And they were like, "Look, there's well, you there's know something uh, down there." That, cold. Yeah, <laughs> there's something down there. Uh, you don't want to mess with it, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I I love the idea of that. There's some uh, civilization living on this planet that we have no idea. There, it, it could be really easy. I feel like because if you're underground, no one no one can see it unless you're digging underground. And and mo- all of the stories are like, you know, it, it, uh, 
Hellier again uh, with the we talked about that earlier, but like the oh, cave yeah. system. I don't know if you've heard about that, Gary, but Hellier's about it starts out about these uh, this story about these goblins coming out of mine shafts, and any uh, um. I always forget the guy's name that got his finger shot off. Um, that dude's name. He he was like suicided by the government. We think because he had. Oh weird... yeah, yeah. I forget. I forgot his name. He went down the. He went down that shaft uh-huh. and saw these gray aliens, and they shot something in his chest. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh huh. Yeah, I but, forget that guy's name. Too. Uh, man, it'd be. I feel like humans are the only only time we're looking down is when we're looking at our phones and we're looking straight forward when you're driving or walking and we're never looking up and it's just you know we don't believe things until we see it or. You know, maybe hear enough people. Talk well, about I mean, we, we've there, we got yeah, no reason to look up anymore. There's no threat from above. Mm. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, they get things. I mean, because going- I mean, when it comes down to it, most of our our strongest instincts are our primal ones, and you know, all of our threats are always coming. You know, if we live in the woods, then we might have threats from above, or if we live somewhere where there was a large predator, like a you know, like some of these big cats that live in the trees. But other than that, we don't have any reason to look up anymore. We're the apex predators. Yep, and most of the time, you can't see what's above you, anyways, because there's so many lights. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah light pollution is pretty crazy, and and you can when uh, we went out to uh, the UFO con um, over there in uh, Laughlin, we got to go out in the desert uh, for one of those UFO hunting things with the night vision goggles and the lasers and everything, Sweet. and uh, you could really tell the difference from like where I live in Florida and like out there in a the desert where there's just nothing, and it was like so amazing. Yeah, I bet. I bet. Did you? Were, could you see the the Milky Way galaxy from your angle, or was it bright enough? Uh, yeah, I mean, it was it was absolutely beautiful. Um, one one, I went out twice to do that, and one night it was like a lot of cloud cover, and then the other night it was just completely clear, and it was like you could just see the Milky Way so beautifully, and you know you could see everything. You know, you see the satellites going across, you could see Mercury, you could see Venus. It was like a really good night. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, dude, that's so, awesome. so when you do you look up at the stars often? I mean, after this incident, do you look up and wonder like, hey, is that, you know, am I looking at a satellite or do you do, sometimes do you see some weird stuff like that? You're like, oh, well, there's no blinking light on that thing. I wonder. Uh, I'm wondering, <laughs> yeah, not it. I'll be honest with you, not as much as I should, but every once in a, once in a while you step outside and it'll be nice and dark. And, yeah. Yeah. You, you just look up and it's just perfect. And then. Yeah. Stare at it for a couple of minutes, but then you you realize, oh, I got other shit. I got. It. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. So, what about what about you, PJ? Yeah, man. What do you ever after this incident, PJ? Did you ever think like you ever look up at the stars and just see, or, or just think about, man, what what's up there, or see anything weird like that? And I also want to know your theories as well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, we'll get my theory out of the way because I'm like Gary. I only have one. <laughs> cool. Um, if you if you look at the two publicized incidents with the Navy, the one in 2004 that we were a part of and the one in 2015, there's two distinct um, characteristics of, of the operating environment at the time. In 2004, the Nimitz strike group, Gary's ship, my airplanes, the Nimitz, all had – what was top of the line at the time. There was nothing better. We were testing stuff. We were doing all kinds of crazy stuff. We were the top of the line in 20, 2004. In 2015, when it happened on the East Coast, that carrier strike group had all the latest toys, had all the latest you know, technology, was the top of the line. And if I'm somebody on this planet whether it's us or another country testing technology, I'm going to want to test it against the best there is. And coincidentally, at the two times there were major leaps in battlefield technology, stuff showed up. Yeah. Whoa. So, you know, I still lean 50 50 between us and who knows what else. You know, I'm not sold on it, but I, I definitely could see it being our tech. Yeah, I mean, well, that's a, that's definitely a, a a very healthy point of view, you know. It's it's you know to to be fifty fifty, you know. Even though you know me and Ben, we love this stuff. We're we're in it. You know what I'm saying? But there is 
always there always has to be that speculation. Yeah, you know that it's our stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely, definitely. Because I mean, I mean, dude, I, you know, not knowing anything, uh, uh, you know, really uh, about the military, you know, I mean, you you can be just a, a regular person and know that you know these guys have the top of the line of this stuff, and there's also stuff that they don't even know about that's that's being worked yep. on right now at this at this moment. Yeah, exactly. So, so is is it possible? Uh, I'm just you know speculating that there is this shadow government that like nobody should know about because they're working on the best of the best of the best. I mean, do you think it's a possibility or, or what? Have that, you heard, heard any that, whispers? Uh, <laughs> I don't think, I really know if I'd go that far. I mean, Gary said it more than once. You know, this turns out to be ours. You know, we're going to have to reevaluate what we know about, you know, what's possible physics and all that kind of nerdy stuff that he likes. <laughs> uh, but at the same time, you know, I worked as a defense contractor f- after I got out for Northrop Grumman and was privy to some stuff that's relatively public now, but it wasn't at the time. You know, so there's stuff that I know about that people don't. I guarantee there's stuff other people know about that I don't know about. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, well, I mean, that's uh, that's uh, enough for me to to be still uh, honestly still fifty fifty, right? Because like, yeah, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. It's not you know, it's not you're not saying like I know for a fact, but it's it's always going to be back there. Um, I'm just yep. asking yeah. because you guys are the closest to this stuff, you know. And that's uh, it, yeah. I mean, so, the, you got you got to remember you're you're hitting the heart of it. I mean, there's a reason why I have so many different theories is because. There's just so many things like when I do my mental experiments, you know, I start with, all right, this is what it could do. All right. This is what I think has to happen for this to have happened this way. And then, okay, well, is this true? If this is true, then this has to happen. Then this has to happen. Then this, And then I work my way back on each theory to see if it would work. And then what if it works all the way through to the first sightings, then I consider it a valid theory. Yeah. Oh, I love yeah. that. Yeah, definitely. Love that. Definitely. I mean, you know, seeing this thing and knowing about advanced technology and knowing, you know, certain things that other people don't know, you know, when you when you when you saw this and you saw the way that it moved and the the maneuvers that it made, you know, does this does that say okay, I think it is a piece of technology, whether it's ours or whether it's somebody else's. It doesn't matter. Um, if it is ours, uh, did the thought of like, is there something inside of that ever cross your mind? Because I mean, from what I hear, these maneuvers. I mean, if if some somebody was inside of these things, like a human being, uh, you'd be mush. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, the inertia and the and the gravity. I mean, it kind of goes back to Gary your your theory about it being uh, some kind of biotech. I mean, there, there there is theories out there similar, but yeah, I mean, I, I just absolutely love the first one that you brought up is that it's just this old ancient civilization tech that's just here, and it's just being controlled by a program that still exists and it's it's doing its um, you know uh, uh, drone kind of. Uh, I guess recon around the world and you're real there's really no intelligence behind it but it's still kind of going on right like i love that idea i mean there's this there's two things it's like is it alive or is it you know half alive is is it yeah is is the craft itself a piece of biotechnology Ooh. you know well we, is the craft like part living well biology? look at uh well, look at OLED TVs. The, I mean, when I was working in tech, we called those uh, um, uh, organ- the, the organic LED TV are made up of like actually live things inside of them. What? <laughs> so, are you serious? Have you ever looked up? Have you ever have you ever looked up that tech? No. I mean, I watched a lot of TV on no, it, but that's about it. it. No. <laughs> that sounds awesome. Oh, oh, when I used to work in that stuff, we called them bio LEDs. <laughs> not dude. organic LED. So full circle on on that uh, algae you were talking about earlier, kind of something <laughs> like that, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so we got shrimp in our TV. <laughs> sea monkeys, dude. We got some sea monkeys. We got some sea monkeys in our TV, man. 
dude i love that that's insane i had no idea yeah that's super cool do you learn something new every day yeah man <laughs> holy crap <laughs> so when you guys were were so y'all were y'all were out at the same time right like when this incident happened uh how many how many days how many days ahead of time were you guys tracking this stuff before, or did you even know that y'all were technically tracking this stuff, like, before, you know, they, they you know, sent the, the planes out to go check it out? I mean, my answer is much shorter than Gary, so I'm going to skip in front of him this time. Okay. After you, my friend. You know, he, he was out, you know, they got a whole week's worth of stories. I have, you know, two hours on one day, and that's all I can talk about. I had no clue about anything till after the fact. Really? And is that just because like you uh you had to go and and take the information basically after after everything was was tracked or is you know um, cuz you- I mean they we were briefly told not to talk about it. Nothing official just, you know, don't talk when when the plane came back, you know, they came and took all my hard drives that were on that plane when uh, Fravor was born. So they took all my data and, you know, it was one of those I, I didn't pay attention to it until I ran across Dave Beatty's uh, documentary. Oh, damn. So, so like, it wasn't until after the fact till like all this stuff kind of kind of broke that you were like, whoa, that was something uh, significant that, that happened. Yeah. Wow. I mean, they made... They made jokes on the ship. They they had a cartoon about it. They they were playing Men in Black and other you know space alien movies. But yeah. nobody had, not everybody had a clue what why they were doing that. And it was just, as far as we were concerned, it was people being stupid. <laughs> Damn. So that's kind of like how like the Eagles didn't know that they were a big deal until like the eighties. <laughs> Dude, that's no. That's, that's called crazy. a lot of drugs. <laughs> <laughs> Too much peyote, man. Hell yeah. <laughs> that's crazy so but the, but gary i mean like you you knew like what was going on the whole time or was it kind of a similar situation to where you didn't really you know fully understand what was happening until after the fact well to basically condense it is that uh you know we started getting the unknown track and they were coming and going so we thought it was what we refer to as clutter where like they were just fake you know it was something that the system was generating itself because it calibrated um it doesn't happen that often but you know when you get something unknown like that and it's not really moving very fast at the time because they were when we initially started tracking them they were only doing like 100 knots which is uh, not very fast yeah, and not very fast. unless it's like well, unless it's like a fleet of hot air balloons or like uh, like somebody's <laughs> really 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 big balsa 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 wood gliders, <laughs> you know, I, I can't we can't you couldn't really see something like that only doing a hundred knots. Yeah. So, you know, so we actually took all the spy system down and the spy techs, the spy guys that actually worked directly on the radars. They uh. You know, they they took it all down, recalibrated it, and then I basically my job at when they're doing that is just to stand by this little like this little like speaker and listen from wait for him to say, all right, re- reload the forty three, which is uh, the computer system, the computer that runs that system, because uh, that was my baby, and then, so I was just standing by, you know, every like. 13 minutes or so all right reloading the 43 all right reloading the 43 done you know and then back and forth for like a long time and then uh, once it's all done then we bring the system back up and sure enough we still have the tracks except we actually have a better lock on them and it, they look clearer and it's 100 percent sure that we have a solid object that we're tracking <laughs> yeah. so so man i've heard I've heard multiple different things. Like I've heard that you guys tracked a hundred of these things. I've heard fifty. I've heard- I'll, I'll, I'll clear that up. All right. Yeah. So senior senior chief day got real excited when he was talking about it, and so he. <laughs> He was referring to like all of the tracks over the whole week because we were getting between three and ten of them tracking at a time. Oh. Now they could be the same; they could have been the same ships that we were just tracking over and over again. But he was referring to every 
backpack over the entire week. There was okay. over a hundred of, you know, so over a hundred times we had multiple tracks, you know, so it's, it's, you know, so it's in the official report that the, the Navy kind of haphazardly put together in 2007. And then again, in 2015, they, uh, they only interviewed like, a handful of people and they kind of when it, when i when i actually got the gist of what the report said i kind of get had a lot of feel of like all right we just want to put a put a put a lid on this and close this up and tie it up in a nice little bow and call it good yeah it wasn't even the right people they were talking to in that report no it was like nobody that really had any clue what was going on really <laughs> oh, damn. i mean it, they did, but they were all active duty, and they all had careers. So uh, they're going to say exactly. They're going to say exactly what little they need to do to not sound nuts and to continue their <laughs> career. Damn right. <laughs> they were just the guys that watched the Men in Black movie. <laughs> they didn't even like know yeah. what's going on. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I think they're only the guys that were still in, and that's it. Damn. Damn. Well, so they've got. I'm career. not going to say. Anything. They got a career the guy was definitely nuts, and he was a complete moron. Yeah, yeah. There's always one of those in the group. <laughs> yeah, we, we're not going to mention any names on that one, but yeah, he was. Uh, but he, he was knows a who he is. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that's crazy, man. So, can you can you also clarify the uh, the speed at which it went from what was it, twenty five thousand feet to below sea level? Like yeah. the speed that it dropped right, at. So, the below sea level thing came from. A sonar technician that was talking to me during the event he was he told me that it went from like from his mouth to, to my ears he said it goes it went from 20 up 28,000 feet down below sea level to negative 500 in like less than a second God. which is ridi- ridiculous speed and plus you know the impact of hitting the water and then he but i can't substantiate that claim though that's the problem right, is because right, yeah. the person that that now wants nothing to do with it. He doesn't, you know, that was something he was bullshitting with me on the ship with. Yeah. And then now he's telling us. So I can't even find out where he heard that because I know it didn't come from our ship because the lead sonar technician on the ship was a good friend of mine that actually got a hold of me and let me know, hey, that was an information that you could have gotten from the Princeton because the sonar techs on the Princeton, in order to be able to triangulate and gain ga- gauge speed with, with sonar, you have to have this special tail that drags behind the ship that has sonar buoys. And uh-huh. all of them pulse at the same time, allowing them to triangulate targets under the water. Huh. Wow. So All then right, so maybe, that, maybe that's not even they did, sorry. Yeah, so we didn't have the tail our tail in the water. He knows for a fact that none of that information could have come from the actual Princeton. But it doesn't mean that another ship didn't have theirs in or that the carrier didn't get an active contact on it. Right. You know, but I, I can only say for certain that it was not the Princeton. And because the guy, I, the, one of the, the, the lead sonar technician at the time that actually ran that shop, the one that, that went ahead and let me know, you know, hey, that's 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 not something he, he got from information from our ship. So if he did get the information, it would have been on a back channel talking over to some one of the sonar guys on another ship, right. or even possibly it might even come even come from the exa- the, the the sub itself. Huh. Oh. So, so, but but we do know that these things were. Hauling ass at some point in time. Oh, they they were they were hauling ass, but I just can't confirm that they went underwater. That's the only thing I can't yeah. confirm. Yeah, yeah. Because until this guy's not really willing to talk to me, I mean, even if I could just get him on the phone and tell me in his own words, yes, I got it from this. You know, this is the source that I got them from. This is what they told me. This is how I know. Then I'd feel more comfortable with it, yeah. but. You know, on the first interviews, I'm just telling them everything that I I heard and I know, you know, so it was something I heard. So I I told them about it. And then, you know, it wasn't until later on that I started getting feedback from my old shipmates, you know, saying, hey, man, you know, what the hell are you talking about? Because, you know, it couldn't have been because of this, this and this, because, you know, everybody loves to correct you. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Nobody's got the Nobody's got the nuts to come out and talk about it, but they love to correct you when you're wrong. So anytime I get anytime. Anytime I'm corrected and the people have like actually, you know, sound, okay, this is why 
what you said couldn't have happened because of this, this, and this, and this. And I'll be like, all right, yeah, no problem. I, yeah, you know what? You're definitely right. So I'll go ahead and go on a public forum and make sure I retract these statements for this. And then, so I've been trying to be transparent as possible anytime because you got to remember it's a 14, 15 year old story that. I've only told a couple of people when I got drunk. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> Damn, you know, yeah. other than just think, I mean, my, my whole passion since then is in the back of my head, just thinking up ways that these things could exist and how they could exist and what the technology is and how the worked. And I didn't care who they were. I didn't care whose tech it was. I just wanted to know how they worked and I wanted to fly one. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Dude, could you so, imagine how fun that would be? Yeah. <laughs> it's it, like, like, like oh, playing dude. Pac-Man, right? Just, <laughs> you know. Dude, yeah. oh, dude! I, in, in, my, in my brain, it works even better than that. You roll in like the. Uh, you ever seen the old movie Flight of the Navigator? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, like, you get into that stupid little silver chair, and it just everything's by thought process. You just think, <laughs> I want to do this, and it goes. Hell yes, <laughs> yes, dude! You show, you show, you show up at an ex girlfriend's house or something. <laughs> what do you think about me now? Yeah. 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 That's what you get for dumping me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna shine the almond. Your new boyfriend drives a Honda Civic. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, dude, that's awesome. <laughs> PJ, so I wanted to ask you, dude. Um, so do I mean? Well, I guess for both of y'all, I mean, do do you know who who came and took your tapes away? No, I mean, I can't speak for Gary. He, he's got two different guys on his ship than I got on mine. Uh-huh. But the two guys on mine showed up with my commanding officer. And we're wearing Air Force flight suits. Oh. And they went, and what they did after that, I have no clue. So they weren't yeah, in like black had, trench coats uh, with black hats and sunglasses, right? Nope. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they were. They, that's the one thing for everyone has got right. Black there was no men in black. They were just wearing normal clothes on my ship. <laughs> Damn, that's so, crazy. So they were wearing like polos, and I mean, I'm just trying to picture these guys. It's like Air yeah, Force. Yeah, just think of like. Think of, think of any guy you've ever seen like in an office that's not dressed to the nines. You know, like you know khakis and a, and like a, a, a freaking uh, you know just a not you know like a, a what is that a, a pla- pla- polo? Oh yeah, yeah, like a a, po- a, po- a polo. Think of a guy in like khaki jeans, a polo, and like a windbreaker. There you go. There you got yeah. the it's the style of the guys. You're like were, you're like damn. You know. Some guy in khakis just took top secret information away. Yeah, from his name was probably <laughs> like Jeff or something. <laughs> Yeah. Probably fucking Greg. Fucking Greg. Hey, yeah. hey. If you were on episode eighteen, you know we don't like Greg. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw. I I just I just listened to eighteen today. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, we had Doug on that episode too. Doug's a cool ass dude. Yeah, he's cool. That's a good episode. <laughs> <laughs> That's insane, dude. But man, I mean, like, so you know, it, you guys, you guys went through this, right? Um, you're sitting there on all this information, and then all of a sudden, uh, guys in khakis show up, take your <laughs> shit and leave. Like, I mean, what is what is the thought process after that? You know, like, like what, yeah. Well, the thing that they kind of like struck me funny is because, like, all right, so if there's an incident that happens, you know it. I've had my tapes taken before when there was a a flight that went down in the Gulf when we were back in the, during the war. And, uh, you know, we had, you know, people in the water and it was an event that happened. So I I wasn't surprised that they wanted the tapes for it, but, you know, they never said anything past, just give me the tapes from, you know, when we were, when we were, you know, when it went down. All right, cool. Give me the time, get the tapes, give them to them. But there was no other directions after that. The one thing that bothered me is that they directed me that they wanted all the tapes that had any data on them. And then anything that even even if it was still in the plastic wrapped up and not used yet, it needed to be deleted so that every single tape in my shop had a timestamp on it so that if they ever went back, they could, if it didn't have a timestamp of right then and during that day or in the future that it was considered that, you know, I might have stolen some tapes or something. Yeah. Damn, dude. Damn. That's. That's fucking. That's fucking crazy. Yeah, that is insane. I mean, yeah. So that's a huge red flag. I mean, uh, yeah. And wait, I, I, I listened to one of your. But interview. to be dead honest with you, that's really other than the fact that we were tracking unknown aircrafts, and I saw, I got to see this video. Uh, 
th- those are the only three things that were like anybody was just like oh that's weird you know yeah. but i mean it, it was like super weird about the chain of command because it seemed like they just like either a want to just like pretend like this wasn't happening <laughs> like there's no way we're going to report this shit because i am <laughs> yeah. so making admiral <laughs> <laughs> right yeah, yeah dude That's i'm up for a, or, for a, a, <laughs> a promotion yeah and at the time our captain was one of those go get go getter captains you know he was some he was definitely a line a line uh, officer looking for uh, you know promotion because he was always volunteering us for all kinds of shit and doing all kinds of crazy you know trying to be the premier guy so it wouldn't surprise me if he was just trying to ignore the whole event at first yeah we don't which would to- explain why they waited waited so long to do the interrogation right it's it happens it has to be like looking for you know objectively uh from his eyes it's like man i don't want to stir the pot like i've got one more whatever one more month or one more year yeah and i'm good like let's not make a big deal about oh well shit when so-and-so is in charge all these fucking ufos came down <laughs> like and, it was his fault yeah it was his fault <laughs> like they wanted to blame it on him that dude <laughs> yeah let me read it this way it was a captain that had a nickname captain red so i mean yeah. he's <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, yeah, the and, meetings will and, continue and red, morale arises <laughs> and red did not like anything that wasn't exactly the way he wanted it <laughs> oh yeah yeah so, so uh pj I, I i think it was you that i heard in an interview you were saying that it was it was rare for air force guys to just show up on the ship and and do this so you you, you thought that was kind of odd whenever uh whenever they showed up right i mean where my commanding officers stayed where his stateroom was where the ready room was and where my work center was on the ship if he wanted to talk to us, we went to him. He didn't wander down to our little workspace. So odd fact number one is the fact that he's knocking on my door. Yeah. You know, and you add into the fact that there's two guys in Air Force uniforms. They stick out like, you know, they, they stick out. It, it's hard like, to like miss red, them. red thumbs. You're like, hey, aren't you guys yeah. supposed to be sending emails? <laughs> <laughs> When we're out to sea, there's really only two ways onto that carrier, helicopter or COD. COD is the twin to my airplane. It's a little sister to it. You know, when we were out to sea, we caught the COD. So I knew, you know, almost all the time I could tell who's coming on and off the ship. Yeah. You know, I would have noticed them getting on or off. Um, so I still don't know how, but they had to have come on the helicopter, which makes sense when you talk about Gary and, um, we were only maybe 45 minute flight time for, for a helo from San Diego where we were. So yeah, there were like several spots mainland for where the helicopter could have flown out to us. Gotcha. Yeah. I was just going to clarify what helo means is helicopter, right? It's I, I recently yes. was like, damn, that's such a cool word. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's a helicopter. <laughs> oh God damn it. So did you guys have to sign NDAs? Oh yeah, good. No. No? As far as far as I know, the only the only people that had to sign one was uh the, the Hawkeye flight group crew. Yep. Oh, dang. Okay. Yeah. One, of, one of the guys yeah. in ahead, the Hawkeye PJ. was an enlisted tech. One of the guys did the same job as I did. Um he, he was our go to guy for C C so he was up there doing some C C stuff on that flight. Um, so he doesn't want to come forward because he's still in the contracting business with the government. Uh, yeah, but yeah. I've talked to him and they were debriefed right when they got back. And, uh, my rough remembrance of the timeline completely sorts, um, completely supports his timeline. Um, but one of the little known facts that he shared other than co- or basically backing up what I've said is that the uh, Tic Tac actually formed up with the Hawkeye very briefly. Oh, Ooh. really? Um, at a highly publicized portion of the event. But uh, the five guys in that yeah, plane, they, uh, they could see it through their little port window. Oh, yeah. shit. Damn. Did you ever talk funny to sto- Sorry. Funny story about those windows. Um, it was way back when I first reached out to Dave Beatty. You know, he was clarifying some stuff, and I provided Dave with all kinds of supporting documentary documentation to prove that I wasn't some kook trying to get in on the game. Um, but I forget who he was talking to, but they're coming back and they're saying, "Oh, the guys in the Hawkeye, they they 
can't see. They don't have windows. So I had to send them a picture of the Hawkeye and it's windows. Uh-huh. Then they're like, oh, the, you know, the, the ATs, the enlisted guys, they don't fly in planes anymore. So I had to send him a picture of my buddy sitting in the back of the airplane, airborne, you know. So I kept, you know, so many people have misinformation about the Hawkeye. It's it's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> it's just so many people that just don't understand. <laughs> yeah, it's like they'll read like in one little article about like what they plan on doing in the future or, you know, and they won't like look at like the time frame. Like they'll go look it up and it'll be like, Oh yeah, now in two thousand sixteen or whenever it was they looked at it up. Now this is how they do it, but what did they do in two thousand four? You know? <laughs> they, they don't, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, those are such little details that, like, unless you're reading, like, sometimes it would maybe take a book to go through all this stuff, or maybe just this podcast, I don't know. But <laughs> but little details like that that people miss that about misinformation, like you're saying, some people saying, oh, well, that couldn't have happened because this particular aircraft does not have any UFOs, so there couldn't have been any eyewitnesses, but in fact, they have freaking, freaking windows, and th- that's just not true. My my next question would be like, I mean, was did you did you guys ever you know have lunch or talk to anybody that that, uh, that was it similar to what you guys had witnessed and like the shape of this thing? Did everybody just say tic tac? So everybody just agreed, okay, it looked like a tic tac, or was there any kind of uh, you know back and forth? Like, oh, I saw a, it was an almond shape, kind of like flight of the navigator, right? <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think I think just about everybody. You know, I mean, we we saw the like everybody that was you know had access to the secret lands on my ship. We all kind of agree that yeah, it's it's a, definitely a tic tac shape. Yeah. Huh. And so, what about so we we know about the tic tac, and then and then there's the other one, uh, and I think that's in like the 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 with the thermal camera, that I one, guess the one that that rotates gimbal. onto its side, the gimbal footage. Yeah. All right. So, so you're talking about actually two separate events, to be honest with you. Okay. So the 2004 event was the 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 uh, the uh, FLIR footage that right. flips the camera through, where it just kind of zips off the screen. Mm-hmm. And then you have the gimbal, which was actually 2015 off the East Coast. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so it's actually it, they were doing basically the same thing we were doing is training missions off the co- east coast, and they ran into these things and started tracking them, and then filmed them with their with their cameras, and they actually got better footage than we did and a longer video than we did, or at least that's it survived because it's so much newer <laughs> than ours, because uh, like. Because like right now, you know, it's like the Navy worded their their stuff that just came out very carefully that this is the only footage available. Uh. You know, they didn't say, you know, they don't ever say that there never was a longer video. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. They, they just say this, this is all we have left. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah. so the footage and in that regard we to Chad Underwood, the guy who recorded it, has said there's a longer video. Well, he said he had his camera on the entire time. So. Yeah. Oh, damn. <laughs> that that argument should be no more. Yeah, well, yeah. there you yeah, go. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, I, I would assume that there's there's more footage of this stuff, you know? Like, yeah. I mean, I would assume, it, 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 you know, if he had the camera on it the whole time, then, then that's one thing. But, you know, in my mind, I think, you know, like s- snips and pieces – of of footage, you know, I guess if it's if it's moving yeah, kinda, so fast, I mean, you you got to be able to, you know, you probably see it and then you don't see it and then you got to find it again and then see it again, right? Or, or oh, okay. well, I kind of have a feeling that what they did is they just took the meat and potatoes out of the video because I mean, oh. it, on the whole time it's just going to be like a lot of video of just nothing, <laughs> you know. So, you know, he's only going to be able to get this thing in frame so much, and right. then so we just took like the meat and potatoes of it and then what it seems like is that it was a compressed file that was emailed right so that's that's where the degradation comes in and of course it went it went from analog to digital which you're going to lose a little bit there right so by the time everybody's done messing with this thing all you got is this like grainy garbage video (laughs) it's like a two like 250 pixel like terrible video it might as well be been uh, recorded on the only reason and the only reason that it's any valid is just because the Navy, yeah, that's our stuff. And, yeah, it's real unknown. <laughs> you know, that's the only reason anybody even believes that it's a video. <laughs> well, 
I mean, kind of piggybacking on that, what do you think about the Navy just publicly saying, yeah, that's our video and we just don't know what it is? What, what are your, what are your thoughts on that? I think that they, I think they're thinking they made a mistake at this point because actually when I go <laughs> on to uh, the, the show tonight, we're actually going to be discussing, you know, he, he actually wanted my specific opinion about like this recent where they're kind of backpedaling and saying, you know, oh, well, there's no other videos. And, uh, you know, they're they're basically trying to kind of reverse what they said now. Oh, so, yeah, they're uh, nice. they're backpedaling a little bit. OK, well, they just didn't know the, the media firestorm, you know. It's, it's, yeah, I don't think they thought that it was going to set a fire like it did. Yeah, it's so funny. because I mean, what? Well, what they did is they made the the pilots, us, and everybody involved with these two events into literally the most credible UFO witnesses in history. Everybody. Yeah, <laughs> well, well documented, like backed up by not only just individuals, but individuals of a military background. And then the Navy comes, I mean, from the Pentagon, all this stuff kind of happens at once. It just... Yeah, I don't think I agree with you. I don't think they realized the gravity of that little like. Oh, we just don't know what it is. But yeah, uh, here you go. Yeah, here you go. <laughs> yeah, I got a, I got a feeling that was kind of one of those things where you know, all right, this is the statement we're gonna say. Is this okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, that's fine. It looks fine. It should be good. And then I said, oh shit, and yeah, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> but man, I just I love that it happened. I just. Yeah, like the 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 idea of oh, this isn't good. You and me both. Yeah. Now most people don't think I'm crazy anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, that's that's a that's a big part of it, man. And and I think I well, think it's... you know you kind of you kind of like hit the nail on the head. Like it, you know it 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 kind of turned this event uh, into a, a thing where there's multiple credible witnesses. And you know, oh, well, when, when the last time that a UFO story ended up on the mainstream media, exactly, exactly. <laughs> and and so I, I guess my question to you guys is, is you know, being some of these credible, uh, you know, witnesses, does does that in any way kind of, you know, if, if it's like a military person or a pilot or an astronaut or, or or you know what have you, a police officer, you know, and they say something, you know, it's considered credible, right? But if you're a, a regular run of the mill person who's like, oh my god, you'll never believe what I saw, usually those people are made out to be quacks. Does 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 exactly. this experience kind of maybe open the door you think for for the the regular person to maybe not be considered such a quack no nah, we still think you're nuts man <laughs> 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 no <laughs> no i i think i think that it, it helps with the stigma in the military because you gotta remember like guys like me and pj we're ground pounders we're we're wire jockeys you know we're we're uh, card swappers we're you know we're we're, we're just techs you know, so I mean, if if you know, they think we foes, we're still going to get a promotion because we can fix shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Love but that. Now, That's awesome. You, you know, but you know, a pilot, man, they got to be sound of body and mind. You know, they're running around in a in a in a death machine. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah. they don't want they don't want those guys to be nuts. So I mean. If they started talking about stuff, then all of a sudden they get a stigma. They get psychologically evaluated, and they get grounded, and you know they get, oh, that's the guy that saw the UFO, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so they had, so they had a lot more rough than we did, you know. They they yeah. they got a harder stigma stigma than than anybody, and I, that that them coming out like this helps with that stigma, you know, it allows them to report what they actually saw instead of like, well, you know, there was this super bright light and, uh, yeah, it must've been just, you know, swamp gas. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. In the middle of the, in the middle of the Pacific. <laughs> <laughs> Where, where's the, where's the nearest swamp in the middle of the Pacific? Exactly. <laughs> I think it's an, I think if you had to if you had to find it exactly, it's in the crack of your ass, and that's the only swamp. <laughs> yeah, probably that I'm <laughs> the nearest swamp. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah. So Gary, dude, I, I heard you uh, you were talking about how the uh, how y'all spy radar. It was it was kind of a running joke. Uh, it was called alien radar and and you know reverse engineered alien technology. Did did this event uh, put an end to that joke? 
Uh, hell no. Techs are nuts. <laughs> <laughs> We're just like, we told you it was alien tech. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, yeah. That's great, man. That's great. That's awesome. I love that. <laughs> You got to remember, though, you know, it's like my ship, other than like people that are on the deck, the deck Siemens and, and the bosun mates and just like only a handful of other rates, my entire ship's made up of the super advanced rates, whether it's EWs with electronic warfare, fire controlmen that work on the weapon systems, gunners made that no. work on no. weapon systems. No. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> Yeah, basic, basically, we're, we, we're all, we're, it's a big ship of geeks that can kill an entire country. So, you know, <laughs> we're not doing too bad. Yes, man, that's awesome. Uh, but, you know, so we're not talking about, you know, a bunch of deck apes, you know, doing some wiring in some stupid airplane. We're talking, you know, super advanced techs <laughs> that, you know, deal with electronics. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but we're, we're, but we're, what my point is, is we're all fakers. We're all, you know, we're not, we're not going to be just like oh that's cool and then going about our business we're all going to be like you know i wonder how the physics on that works you know and, <laughs> and yeah, just absolutely. sitting there and start starting to start to rip out theorems and you know f- figure out you know okay, there's no way that that could really work at least not with this physics let's also invent some new physics yeah. Yeah. so i mean it's you know that's the kind of people that are on these uh, on these ages ships right which which kind of like leads me to uh, uh, Gary I know you're in the uh, UAP this UAP expedition uh this new initiative uh, this new company that you're you're starting did I get the the name right the UAP expedition <laughs> Yeah, USP Expeditions, and I think they added like a technology co or something to it. I'm the I'm the I'm the, uh, I'm the vice president of this uh, this expedition, and uh, basically, like to start out, we've been doing a lot of background research on San Clemente and the surrounding areas where all these UAPs. Um, sorry to get a little serious with you guys for a little bit, but this has been like kind of a passion of me and Kevin and some of the other guys for since 2017 when we all got together. Um, well, there's been over like, as long as there's been people in that area, they've been seeing the same shit that we tracked. I mean, so we're talking like hundreds of witnesses, you know, people that have lived for generations that just know about this stuff. I was talking to a uh, via email to a lady that used to do uh, tours off of San Clemente to bring people out to actually just see them. Like she yeah. she could regularly bring people out just to see them. And so our idea is that well, if we get a bunch of smart, super smart, you know, actual scientists out there to do real research, we could probably hopefully figure out maybe replicate the situation, find them, study them, and try to figure out exactly what the hell they are. And, uh, you know, in the future, you know, we're looking at some pretty major funding for our operation, which if everything worked out good, you might be seeing us all over the place. That's really awesome. (laughs) Yeah. And so it's, 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 it's pretty exciting. Uh, And honestly, if I can quit my job for like a year, I'd be super stoked. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. I, I feel the exact same way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, you you do the work and keep up with us, and we'll talk about it for you. We'll, we'll, we'll help each other uh, quit our day jobs. <laughs> that sounds like a plan. Man. Yeah, we, we have a, a couple friends. Uh, one, uh, her name is Melinda Leslie, and, and you'll be getting to her pretty soon on the podcast, man. Uh, she's one well, of those ladies who... who she's, can- uh, she's a real good friend of mine. Oh, cool! Oh, awesome, Hell yeah. dude. All yeah, right. yeah. Well, so I mean, yeah, she's she did. actually the she she did the UFO con that actually was our all of our first events. So we know Melinda pretty well. She's an awesome, awesome lady, man. Super awesome lady. Uh, yeah, and she, yeah. she takes people out on those on those uh, little tours as well, man. You know. Yeah, that's actually who took us out over there in uh, when we were over there in the desert. Oh, oh that's so cool. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, she's a super nice lady. She has got uh, she's got some crazy information, man. All that that uh, Mill Labs <laughs> research and and stuff like that. Uh, I don't yeah, know if, I, if you've seen. The, hope- have you seen the documentary, The Seating? I haven't seen that. I actually was just listening to the episode where you kind of glazed over that a little. And I was like, yeah, maybe I might well go watch that. She's in it. Watch it. It's 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 pretty awesome. <laughs> 
Yeah, she was telling me about it, but I'll be honest with you. Some 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 of the stuff, you know, I, I'm still just a nuts and bolts guy. You know, I'm like a what you would <laughs> guess would you call it, like a skeptical believer. You know, you yeah. mean give me a, give me at least a a grain to go on, and I might you know start start looking into it. But I got so much shit that I even just got to catch up on on just UFO history. Never mind. Absolutely. The, 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 I'll keep the fringe stuff for, for when I got a little, little bit of time. But I mean, yeah. to, you know, to like somebody like Melinda, she's so passionate about it. It makes you want to listen to her and believe oh, what she's saying. So, so yeah. I, you know, I definitely, you know, I definitely feel like there's something there. But I, you know, I'm not sure. I'd have to look into it a lot more before I'd uh, yeah, really and, get into it. Get into it. Yeah, there's, because there's, if that's true, that's got to be like one of the worst situations that's ever happened to the females on this planet. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I I understand the 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 nuts and bolts aspect uh, for sure. You know that's you know it's 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 kind of a hard thing to wrap your mind around. Uh, but you know. You you also said uh, you know it's not impossible, just highly improbable, right? You know exactly. So, so you know, I, I try really hard not even even if I don't believe in what somebody's saying, I try hard to at least listen to it and gauge it and just kind of if I don't quite believe it, I'll put this on this shelf over here until I find more information. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. you know, you know, lady's so. got you know thirty plus years of of research in the in the mill lab stuff and. Uh, I mean, you know, it, it it it's it's hard for me to wrap my head around, you know, and I'm totally into this stuff. Yeah, same. And it, same. it it blows my mind. But you know, when you start looking at all the the names and the people that she's involved with, and you know where they work, you know, like it's it's uh it's 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 pretty intriguing. Definitely, uh, to say the least, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely something to, you know, there is so much to this dude. Like you were saying, like, you know, you got a lot of, you got a lot of research to do. Me and Ben are barely even scratching the surface of this stuff. And it, 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 every time we talk to somebody, man, like we have to scoop our brains up off the floor (laughs) because, you know, it just blows our minds. Um, but yeah, Yeah. there's, there's just so much to it, man. There's so much to it, but it, it, it helps a little bit when you have somebody who, has the research and has the you know the 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 data to go along with it uh it you know it makes it a little more a little more real even though it is uh completely insane <laughs> yeah to you know I'll hang out with say say it again pj I said, that's why i like to go on these things with gary i sound smarter <laughs> <laughs> oh dude he, he, you, you're you're a pretty smart cat you know it's it's not the guy running his mouth that's smart it's the guy that's keeping his mouth shut and listening so oh, that's right that's right and that's so i'm just the guy that just the guy that runs his mouth for the group <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey man. you need the balance right you need somebody to speak you know it's it's a little bit of both i feel like both of you guys are just uh, I, I just love the passion the passion in you gary and and, and and pg i know you're passionate about this stuff too and you, you we wouldn't have you on the podcast if you weren't so man i just i'm just so stoked that you guys are just willing to go out there and talk and you, uh, you mentioned earlier you you guys wanted to uh you guys wanted to speak out after david fravor and it's just like man talk, can you talk a little bit about that experience like after david fravor came out did he let you guys know personally or were you just kind of like hey well shit let's do this well uh, I'll be dead honest with you. I've never spoken to Dave Fravor, nor did he have any desire to speak to any of us. Uh, I don't, uh, I'm not really sure, you know, they got a certain narrative that they've stuck to. And uh, I think that it's just based, based off of the, the report that was actually filed from the Navy's investigation. And so they stick right with that storyline. I'm so glad you just said that, dude. I'm yeah. I want to pick your brain about that cuz we think we me and Joe think the same there's mm-hmm. something weird about that narrative that all they're this, talking about. All this TTSA because, stuff and yeah, absolutely. Well, with the t- 
with uh you know with the with the with the report that that, that um Paco was talking about um I mean we we actually got in the phone with Paco just a couple of weeks ago and you know he was cordial um but I mean completely dismissive I mean he just basically thinks we're just all full of shit and that there's no possible way and the only and his only basis is because Fravor says so and the report doesn't mention anything about it so you know if whatever the official report says and that's it that's all he's going by which you know what i can't really blame the guy because you know his reputation's on the line you know where well, i got to lose i i tell you my story and that's it you know i'm a cable guy in florida the hell am i gonna lose <laughs> there you go I you know. free cable dude is that free cable yeah, well, <laughs> disca- heavily discounted. <laughs> Ain't nothing free in this world, brother. <laughs> oh, okay. uh, yeah, well, I mean, that's that's awesome, though. I mean, I, I think it's I think it's great that you know more people are are speaking up about the event. I mean, the more yeah, you know, the more you know, eyewitnesses, you know, that you can corroborate, you know, it it well, my- solidifies the story for sure. Well, my official opinion about Dave Fravor is that I absolutely respect the man. He's a Top Gun pilot, and from what I all accounts I've heard from other other people that have worked around him is that he is what they would consider the best of the best when it comes to pilots. So you know the the attitude and the, everything else that comes with it. It's just part of that package, man. You just either gotta roll with it or you know. If he doesn't want to talk to us, that's cool. It doesn't bother me. Yeah. I'm still going to support the dude. I still think he's, you know, if he says, you know, he didn't have radar contact or if he says he got jammed, I believe it 100%. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, that's, so. important. that's important to know. I feel like a lot of people kind of lump all these stories together. Like, you know, you talk to one witness and the other, and they maybe have two different experiences. But I think it is important to bring up both sides, right? It's like, this guy says this, and this guy says that. You, you kind of got to maybe not lump them all together, but just figure out all the different sides of the story. We're all just trying to figure this thing out, right? This is just one event that so many people were up I mean, of. You know, so the basic, the basic nuts and bolts of the extra story is, is okay, we tracked unknowns. How many? Doesn't matter. It's an unknown. It's an actual, real, physical object we tracked that we have no idea what it was. It displayed properties of being able to do right-hand turns, uh, you know, breaking the sound barrier without making a sonic boom. Um, it did all these amazing things, these these things that we can't figure out how it did. And then we had, after we tracked it, we had an F-18 interrogated, which was David Fravor's flight. He then saw it interrogated it did a small gun you know uh, you know a little dog fight without shooting <laughs> with it and and the thing just flew circles around him it, it was shock and awe to him because of how crazy it just outmaneuvered the best of our planes at the time you know i mean that was the best in the world at the time you know so those are the, the nuts and bolts of the story that is what people need to be focused on is the fact that this event happened that that this technology exists there is something flying around there is a you know i in my heart doesn't want to say a threat but when it comes down to it you know here's a technology that literally can just do whatever the hell it wants yeah it it is a threat even if it's non-hostile it's still a threat you know and i know that sounds weird but you know it's like Say you have uh, some very devoted people of country A that move and immigrate to country B, and then all of a sudden country A decides that they want to go to war with country B. Now you have divided, you know, you've got, you're going to always have a handful of people that are still devoted to the motherland. You know? So even if they're not a, not, not a uh, threat to us now, it says if we don't develop technology where we can actually go to war with them, they decide, well, you know what, screw it. You guys had a good run, so <laughs> yeah. new, we're going to do like, I hope somebody made an art, because we're going to do like Noah and melt the ice caps, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I, 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 I think it, about that, like, uh, kind of connection between, uh, you know, horses in in in, uh, in, in Mexico when, when the Spaniards came over with horses, and nobody knew 
what a horse look like, right? They're like, oh man, these yeah. people are so fucking fast and they're half horse, half man. And oh man, they're in and out and we can't ever tell where they're going to be or where they're going to. It's just kind of like that same connectivity of it's just we don't know if they're bad or they're good until you know that they're bad. Well, I mean, right? what's I all, what's any technology you don't understand? It's just magic, right? Magic, right? <laughs> it's only magic. It's only magic until you understand what it is. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, the 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 stance on are these things a threat? I really appreciate your kind of description of that. That okay, well, it is unknown and it can do whatever the fuck it wants, right? I just I'm I'm still kind of on the fence on whether it is a threat or not. But maybe that's well, just it. It, it. It's always going to be a threat because we can't do anything about it. So it's like if I walked up to you and you're a super small dude and I just start pushing you around, you can't stop me. Right. Well, you know, say I stop pushing you around or I stop hanging around you, even though you know you can't do anything about it, then, you know, anytime I could just decide to go over there and pummel you to death, <laughs> you know, right. but oh, I don't have shit. to, I could just, I could just be chill. I could just be chill yeah. and just be like hanging out and be like, yeah, dude, this is my boy. This is my boy. But then all of a sudden, you know, you ain't my boy no more, you know, right. if I Done. Piss, you know, piss you off or something. <laughs> dude, that's like some psychological deep kind of it stuff, is. man. It I've is. never really thought of it that way. No. Now you get a little insight of how my brain never stops working. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I've got. I mean, I've got you know boys of mine that are you know a little more muscular than me. And I'm like, man, that, I could I could take them, but in reality, I mean, <laughs> we can't push the shove. He'd probably <laughs> destroy my ass, you know. But I mean, th- so does does that mean that I should always see my friend as a threat? You know, it's like we we yeah, don't made that. Not, yeah, until you piss him off, he's not. <laughs> yeah i think yeah. maybe the difference there is with that kind of line of thinking is we don't have a a, a relationship with whatever this is to establish a fr- well, we, a friendly uh uh relationship so we, don't, we don't have any reference. the public doesn't the public doesn't have a relationship with them or right, they gotta remember that you know just because we as a public entity don't have one doesn't mean that somebody on this planet doesn't Right. Very right. good point. Yep. Very good point. Yeah. 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 I love that. Yeah. So, so like, here's 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 an idea for you. Say that there's uh, say say this is all all they do experiments on everything. Like, say on your on your thing where they should collect uh, you know uh, DNA and and uh, you know all this stuff from us. You know, biological samples from us. You know, say they say they go to the world leaders or the governments and say, look, you know, we're going to give you this tech, but, you know, 1% of the population we're going to, we're going to take every year. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 What talk- are they going to say? No. Right. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, that's yeah. why the CIA was invented in the first place was to assure that this was able to happen. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> Who knows? You know, men in black be just going to make sure that it does happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, they, they, they could be just a straight agency just to smooth over all these abductions, you know? I mean, <laughs> it's right. It's, it's cause, like, they cause could... how many... sorry. If sorry. you do a Google search, if you do a Google search for how many missing persons, all right, and then you say at least 90% of those people were either murdered or just disappeared by other humans, you know, maybe, uh, you know, a little bit of, uh, you know, the Cl- they knew something about the Clintons or something. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Dude, always go missing. <laughs> if, you just, if you just leave it down to that, you know, 10% or that 1%, that still takes up a lot of fucking people missing every year that yeah. nobody knows where they went. Right. It was either aliens yeah. or the Clintons. <laughs> We've narrowed it down, <laughs> dude. Have you seen the document? Have you all seen the documentaries uh, "Missing 411"? I've heard about it, and I saw the uh, trailer for it. They're pretty badass. Yeah, there's two of them. You, should, you also check it out if y'all are interested. It's uh, it's pretty, it's pretty like third party. It really doesn't say what stance it takes. Uh, but the guy, they did a really tasteful job of saying, hey, here's some statistics on how many people go missing every year in state parks. Well, turns out state parks don't have fucking any documentation on that. Oh, you guys did an episode about this. So, yeah, I know everything that you guys talked about. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. I love and, that. And, and if you do want information, it costs millions of dollars to obtain the information. Pretty crazy. Well, yeah, because they, they don't, you know, I mean... 
that's their bread and butter for people to come to those parks. So if there's like, you know, 10 people missing every month, <laughs> you don't want to go to that park. Right. I mean, hell, if there's one shark, there's one shark attack at a beach here in Florida, nobody goes there for like, you know, a year. Right. <laughs> You're like, well, it was a good thing Netflix was invented. Uh, yeah, man. <laughs> Hey, sorry, sorry, honey, we ain't going to Yellowstone. Uh, no, <laughs> not no. this, it's not just this like year. Over, uh, over in Yosemite, they've got these these pools, and I mean, if you fell into this pool, you're not coming out because you just die because it's just nothing but methane and just these nasty chemicals, you know, in some of these these uh, things. And I mean, there's signs saying, you know, don't be messing around over here because if you fall in, you're just dead. You're not getting out. <laughs> <laughs> and they and apparently there's actually so many people that actually fall into this thing every year, but they don't say anything about it. Oh, my God. <laughs> they didn't post a sign. Oh, my God. <laughs> they put labels awesome. all over bleach, like, do not drink this, but they can't even post a fucking sign on this methane pool. They do. Yellowstone? They do post this. People are stupid. Oh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah I, I agree with that 100%. Don't do not go into the fart pool, please. <laughs> hey, let's go into the fart pool. <laughs> Darwin, the Mediterranean. <laughs> That's exactly right, man. Yeah. That's exactly right. Which, uh, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, I can't say, uh, you know, I'm opposed to that, you know? <laughs> like, maybe they should stop labeling certain things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you're dumb enough to drink. Nothing to meat. see here. Not dangerous. Keep moving. <laughs> yep, exactly. Exactly, man. Uh, that's, that's awesome, dude. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. God. Hey, so uh, th- the most important question of the night: uh, Have you guys seen Mandalorian or what? <laughs> uh, hell yeah, I'm, I'm, on, uh, episode- I'm behind. I don't want to hear it. All right, uh, I'm All on right. episode three where that thing happens with the one little thing, and you know they they you know. <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 hey, we won't give any worry, spoilers I'm out gonna... for 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 PJ. All right, this is the way. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna send, don't worry. I'm gonna, I'm gonna send him a text after this to let him know everything <laughs> happened. Oh, oh, dude, yeah, yeah. Catch up, man. It's it's pretty awesome. I'm waiting for my kids. I gotta watch it with my kids. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yes. All right. I'll yes. give you that one. I, I haven't seen the new Star Wars yet, so so I'm behind. That's on that. I have to talk about that. Is it pretty badass? Yeah. I, oh yeah. Cool. Yeah, I haven't cool. seen it with that. The rise of the uh, rise of the. That's I, the one. Last, yeah, I think it's man. is it Last of the Jedi? Yeah, yeah, I saw it too. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, I, I, love, I, love it yet. I haven't seen it yet. Uh, I hear it's pretty badass. There's a couple of the the, the snobs that are like, oh, it wasn't that good. Fuck I hate those that people. Shit. <laughs> Fuck those. Yeah, people. it's like it's like that. What's that? What's that meme I saw? It's it's, it's like me sitting in front of the new Star Wars movie because. It's a fucking new Star Wars movie. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. exactly. Yeah, dude. Exactly. <laughs> oh, there was so dude. much, so much in that episode, or that you know. Well, I guess it is an episode because it's episode nine or whatever. But man, I love that movie. I, I'm not gonna give any spoilers away. But all right, don't give any spoilers away. Yeah. Try not to. What about the new Lost in Space? Uh, I'm on like uh, the third episode right now. I, I, I watch it when I run. Yeah. Well, <laughs> whoa, dude! I, Jesus Christ! Oh, he's you're are you on a treadmill or are you holding it up in front of your face? Uh, <laughs> no, yeah, uh, it's on it's on an elliptical. I, I run uh, oh. about uh, eight miles every other day. Oh, you, Damn! Dude. I was gonna say, dude, I can't even like chew gum and run at the same time. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, yeah, no, it's got to be on a machine. <laughs> <laughs> so Gary's got he's got a uh, gazelle going on. <laughs> Y'all remember the gazelle? <laughs> I wish. You, yeah, <laughs> I was look like. I was gonna say uh, the other day you had messaged me and it was like it was like five fifteen in the morning and I was like holy shit he's up this early too is, <laughs> is that like are you are you doing work or is it just because you were you guys were in the well, military and you're uh, psycho and you guys are waking up early all the time anyways I get up at five or six every day anyways but uh, uh, and Mondays Wednesdays and Fridays and sometimes Saturdays depending on what day that my uh, workout partner wants to go but we get up at 3 a.m. to go work out before work damn damn, damn. Yeah, my brother's that way too, man. The one that was in the Air Force. He's like, yeah, I'll wake up at like four and I'll go for like a 25 mile run and then, you know, just to burn some energy before I go to work. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, dude. He's like, yeah, then I'll work out three times a day. I have my protein shake. I fix some airplanes. Jesus, dude. I don't go that crazy. I just got, I just got real sick in 2017 and, uh, in order to, you know, I, I uh, was diagnosed with diabetes, all kinds of stuff. I weighed like 
close to a little over 300 and um so i just had to get healthy and uh so i started uh losing weight just by eating right and then then i uh a friend of mine we started going to the gym and then we just kind of just try to keep it going so we can push enough mayonnaise through our veins to survive another day (laughs) and then the mandalorian came out and you're like well this shit's gonna be easy (laughs) yeah dude yeah i I should actually start watching that too but i i like the uh, netflix specials because i can i can hit the the uh the next episode and then skip intro so i can (laughs) actually (laughs) it's a lot it's a lot easier when i'm when i'm when i'm running (laughs) then (laughs) <laughs> to try to have to fumble with trying to you know all right you know next episode skip <laughs> skip this part you know it's... well if I'm gonna binge watch this there's no way I'm watching the intro nine times fuck no <laughs> exactly but if you notice they make you watch the intro for the first episode oh really? yeah I did yeah. notice that yeah. yeah they sure do yeah. but it's smart that they're the only service that does skip intro or wait does Disney Plus go, do that I too? think if you go premium on some of them like Hulu you can skip the intro oh shit and you don't get it oh. well I think. nah I just got I got the, I got the cheap one for 14 bucks I got Disney and uh, Hulu oh yeah <laughs> that's yeah. what's up yeah man hey, you getting any uh, any uh, truck commercials what about truck? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, truck commercials? Zero percent APR. Zero percent APR. <laughs> <laughs> On the Princeton. Now, was that a zero down, zero APR type thing? Or is that like, you know. <laughs> Sorry, PJ. That was uh, from another episode they had. <laughs> it was <laughs> a little bit of inside joke. So they were testing to see whether I let them. You're listening to these guys all day. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome man well, well keep these listening these guys man. get me through a work day they just definitely get me through a work day so when I got my glass time and I'm driving around in my truck it's like I got you guys blasting through the speakers as I'm going to my ne- each job oh, yeah. <laughs> what kind of truck you drive <laughs> Uh, this this is a uh, a van actually. I, oh. I work as a, a, a I'm a service technician. I fix cable, internet, and phone service for Spectrum. Oh, right on! That's right. awesome. Is it one of them old Nissans or is it a Ford? Ford. Uh, it's a Ford F two fifty. Hell yes. yeah! <laughs> That's what's up. Love that. I'm I'm actually I'm actually a Chevy guy. I don't know if you can tell by our logo, the '64 Impala. Uh, you know, I'm a big fan. Me and Ben always said that if we could ever create the technology to be able to travel the universe, we wouldn't do it in one of those lame ass saucers or Tic Tacs. No. We would fix up a '64 <laughs> Impala and and cruise the universe in it because you can fit way more people in a six four than you can in like a like a a, a three alien UFO. You got apparently, those, you get those bench seats, man. Well, yeah, dude. That's got some pretty well, good the, uh, trunk space, right? Hell well, yeah, on the dude. plus side. I used to, I used to have a <laughs> 1970 Impala, <laughs> and I could load up my bass equipment and all of my drummer's shit into the back of that thing. It was awesome. <laughs> well, with a boat like that, if you're flying through the universe, you wouldn't have to worry about hitting anything either. <laughs> you just fucking <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> if you hit it, you, you just knock an asteroids out of the way. <laughs> yep. yep. That. Dude, that reminds me. I, it in uh in that car in that '70 Impala I had, I actually backed into a flagpole that was cemented into the ground, and it had this big metal casing around the cement block, and I dented the shit out of that thing, man, and like cracked the cement all the way through. And then I I got out of the car and I was like, oh no! And I had this little ass dent in the in the bumper of my car, and I was like, oh well, good. At least those things were tanks, man. It, it was awesome, man. It was awesome. I love that car. But that's why people love those cars. That and like the old Bonnevilles, the, like with those big fat trunks. Yeah, they uh, they, they 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 love using those for the derbies, the demolition derbies. Yep, yep, just solid, dude. Solid. I love that. I love that car, man. Oh, yeah. I'd like to I'm get. I'm a more of a Jeep kind of guy. I got. I drive a uh, uh, yeah, 2015 Jeep Cherokee Trailhawk. Oh, nice. Hell nice. Yeah, those I, are I like cars. Jeeps, too. Yes, Hell yeah. Dude. You can run shit over in them. Amer- American made, brother. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. What about you, PJ? I hope you don't I drive, drive a Honda a Civic because I was talking shit about it. No. <laughs> oh, my God. 2011 GMC Sierra 1500. Oh, that's oh, a good looking right, car. All right. All right. I was waiting for him to say I drive a Prius. I was going to laugh. 
Uh, I used to own a couple of VW Bugs. That's about as close as I get. Oh, that's cool. You know yeah, what? Yeah. Cruising Dude, around, picking up chicks in the bug. You, this guy's oh, like... This guy's like six feet tall trying to get into a bug. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's because well I always see the biggest guys like in the smallest cars. Like out here in Austin, we're like, I don't know what it is up, uh, about this place. But, man, there's like these, these giant people in tiny cars. Uh, uh, what time is it? It is. Oh, well, I mean, we're in different states, but it's 830. It's only 930. It's 930. Nice. Uh, my wife reminded me I had another uh, interview at 11. Right, right. Uh, yeah, dude. Uh, Clyde Lewis, man. That's exciting. That's pretty yeah. awesome. Have you been on his show before? Uh, yeah, this will be the second time I've been on his show. And then I've also been on, like, Fade to Black, Coast to Coast. Uh, cool. And, like, I've uh, been on Nap's show. Um, uh, just about Jeremy Corbell. Yeah. Uh, so you ran just about it. Point. That's awesome, dude. Yeah. Well, well, I'm, I'm glad. Be honest with you, dude. I love, I love the little. I like. No offense to you guys, but I like the podcast like this, stuff like that, because guys like you just love this stuff. I mean, you just you know, you're not. You mean, although you would love to just quit your jobs and do this, you know, full time. Yeah, you know, just the energy you guys got, where you just just love this topic. That's what I love. You know, that's why I like coming on the shows like this, and that's you know. Hell yeah! Absolutely. It's uh. Well, I'm glad we could we could be in that uh, in that list of of names that you just named. But I mean, you know, it's 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 one of those things, man. Where you know we really started this thing. Um, one because me and Ben really enjoyed it, but most of all, it's it's because of people like y'all. Yeah. You know, it's it's all about the stories. It's all about the people, man, you know, and, and, you know, what they go through, you know, uh, sometimes people just need an ear. Um, yeah. And we want to be that, you know, that platform. And people if you wanna, have something to say, you know, come talk to us, you know, we're, we're not here to judge you. We're here to listen to your story and then we'll, we'll take it from there, you know? Yeah. If and just like, just like uh, how I how I look at the whole, all these different things is just like even if like one percent of the people are telling the truth, there's still some major crazy stuff going on. Yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, not only do people want to hear about this stuff because it's super interesting and it's way different than their day to day. It's just it, the when you get into it enough to realize that this is actually happening to a lot of people like you said like a, even if it's happening to 1% of the population i mean think about how many people that are telling the telling the truth that aren't in it for the money that aren't just doing it for attention that are doing it you know that are telling their story because this stuff actually happened yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I'm only talking about these abduction stories, but these stories, you know, that that you guys have witnessed are 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 things that, you know, you didn't get abducted. You just saw some stuff that defied the laws of physics and anything you've ever been used to. And yeah, it, definitely, it's just it's really. I think it's really important to to bring it out and you yeah, know, have a good time with it. You know? And I and I, I think <laughs> another important thing, like you know, with with our show is yes. You guys are experiencers. Yes, you guys, you know, are, are, are these military guys that it, that witnessed the, the Tic Tac event. But we also really try to bring out the human element because we got to realize that this stuff is happening, but it's happening to regular human beings. You know, like, I don't know how many other shows, you know, you would listen to it and find out, oh, oh Gary rides the elliptical and watches, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Lost in Space. You know what I'm saying? We really try to keep that human element. We wouldn't know that PJ drives a, a GMC. GMC. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it, we're all just human beings, man, and we have to we have to really uh, remember that. You know? Yeah, because I'll be honest with you, a lot, a lot of with the you know some of the big shows are, are pretty good, but there's, there's a lot of them that just kind of have an agenda. You know, I mean, those guys, they uh, you know. That's their that's their living that they're making, and you know there's only so much you can report on, so there's always going to be either a rehash or an agenda or, you know, and you know that shit gets uh, tedious after a while. So it's like when I can go on a show like this and just kind of relax, have a couple beers, bullshit with some guys, throw out some crazy theories, and just kind of it, it, it's kind of relaxing because uh, like you know you got to mind your p's and q's in some of the bigger shows. Definitely. 
Definitely, man. Well, we're definitely glad y'all are, you are able to <laughs> yeah. come on, and, and, and y'all are always welcome, always welcome on the show. Anytime y'all want to come and shoot the shit again, you know, like, definitely just hit us up, man. We're always available. We're always available, you know? Yeah, keep definitely keep in touch and, and give me some feedback on how you guys did tonight. So, <laughs> we definitely like, uh, will, you know, man. and, and uh, you know, if uh, are you guys on uh, Twitter yet? Uh, we don't have a Twitter yet. We don't have a Twitter. I'm not a big tweet. Uh, I, I've, never, I've never been a, been a, a, a big there's tweeter. A, there's a, there's a pretty have, decent. I wasn't there's pretty decent. This stuff happened. Yeah, there's a pretty decent community on there. That's where a lot of a lot of like. Uh, I answer a lot of questions on Twitter and Facebook. Oh. So, you know, I, I try to keep myself pretty available for questioning. And, you know, even if, like, after the fact, you guys had some questions that you forgot about or because we were BSing about, you know, four different topics that had nothing <laughs> to do with anything. Yeah, yeah. well, hey, what's, but, uh, what, give us y'all's Twitter uh, 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 tag name so people can look you up if they're listening to us. No, right, it's, it's just at Gary Voorhees. And so it's you know super easy. <laughs> Dope. And that's at, uh, at Hughes PJ one. Sweet, perfect, awesome, dude. And and if you just, yeah, and it's, it's Gary Voorhees on on Facebook too. So I mean, I, I keep just the same name all the way around. So yeah, that's make perfect. it try to be easy for everybody. Yeah, I, I love y'all's approach to like, hey, if anybody wants to talk about it, just we'll we'll answer any question you have. I just I, I absolutely love that that it's so you guys are being really open and and just approachable to this whole thing because there's there's so many people that are curious and I just love that man. Well, I get I get really irritated with uh, the people that want to control the narrative and you know profit off of this and you know it's like I'm not I'm not trying to bust anybody's like yeah you know, if somebody's gonna make their dollar I'm not trying to I'm not trying to get in the way of that I'm not gonna hold back just because they want to control the narrative either. Yeah, man, I mean that's so man. refreshing. You know, I just <laughs> yeah. And that blows my mind because you would think the truth would make more of a buck than a narrative, <laughs> right? Yeah. Nah, dude. Nobody wants. Nobody wants the truth. People want to be entertained, and that's that's a sim- that's a simple fact of the matter. You know, it's like if if I uh, like a uh, there's this uh sci-fi fantasy or there's this fantasy book series called the sword of truth series, and I tell you what, there's a statement in that book that holds true. Anybody will believe anything if they either want it to be true or they are scared it's true. Ooh. Ooh. Yes. Love that. <laughs> so, I love you know, that. It's like, so when it comes down to everything, either people, you know, you got the people on our side that, you know, even though we're a little skeptical, we really think that there's something crazy going on, you know, and then you got the other side where the skeptics are like, no, I can't, this, 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 these things couldn't happen. So I have to make it my life to disprove everything, right. you know, <clears throat> where they've gone so skeptical that they can't keep an open mind. And then, you know, for somebody like, uh, you know, and then there's people on our side that are so open-minded that they just think everything's real, you know, so. So it's it's like we need to get back to that happy medium where we can kind of just discuss shit and oh, be like, absolutely. all right, well, yeah. So yeah, man, that's that's actually what attracted me, guys, because you guys were always kind of like, well, I don't know about that, and then you know, you know, I hear you, oh, well, I watched this documentary, and well, you know, it kind of made me think, hey, maybe this is real, you know. So it's, Hell yeah, you know, yeah. So you guys, you guys are doing good, man. Keep it up. Well, man, I can't tell you how much I appreciate that, dude. That that just me and Joe were just freaking out and then and, and man thank you so much for being on the show you guys uh Gary and and uh PJ man I I anytime. can't tell you how much I appreciate you Well anytime you're low on content you know just give me a call I got plenty of, <laughs> of witty uh repertoire <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah awesome Hell man yeah. awesome Well I think that's it that's going to be it for us man and uh you get ready to go on uh Clyde Lewis man and hey don't don't forget to tell him uh uh Joe said what's up <laughs> Joe said and what's up. uh you know uh stay healthy be safe and uh keep getting the truth out man cuz I love Clyde he's the man <laughs> <laughs> Is that his like like uh, quote quote thing that he says or uh, well be healthy be safe no no it's, oh I it's, like that's uh, a new quote you it, got it's, yeah it's uh that's that's something that came out of the old noggin oh damn I like that yeah definitely like that. no his, his thing is it, ground zero with Clyde Lewis you know I love that and then his his intro music is like give up <laughs> give up <laughs> Man, it's awesome I, I love that guy he, he's 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 great he's great. Definitely one of my radio heroes for sure. That's awesome. You know, Art Bell, George Norrie, the, 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 all the all the regulars. You know, that's 
you know the stuff we listen to man. yeah <laughs> so but uh yeah man it's it's been great man thank you guys so much for coming on the podcast and uh like i said y'all are always welcome uh to, to come back anytime man so we'll definitely be uh in contact with y'all yes sir all awesome, right man all Sounds right boys good. all right we'll, we'll talk to y'all soon yes sir all, all right, right bye, bye. Guys, bye. Oh, whoa. Damn, dude. <laughs> so that was cool. That was sick, bro. That was awesome, man. I it, uh dude, I mean, I'm I'm a uh, I'm almost speechless a yeah. little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Like the, you know, Gary's theories were uh, my favorite part, I think. I mean, I love hearing all the details of uh, of the thing. Just shooting shit the shit with these guys. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like you were saying at the end of the podcast like, man, it's just one of these things is just to realize that these people are just regular yeah regular people you know totally we, totally the, we, we the got to remember and, and, and gmcs and, and jeeps well i was gonna say one well, of my favorite parts was the fact that the old pj drives a gmc <laughs> yeah <laughs> but yeah <laughs> he drives a truck yeah, oh, yeah he drives a truck <laughs> yeah dude uh but dude i mean that was awesome yeah, you know man. i i i loved that these guys uh you know have these stories and are willing to talk about it um and then there towards the end of the episode you know it's it's good to just kind of just remember that they're regular people too yeah you know what i'm saying yeah man um it was i i feel like a lot of times sometimes you know people hear these stories and they're like oh man you know these you know like almost like uh 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 damn it what's the name of the show that the alien show um, people ancient Earth, aliens people, oh, of, Earth, people like, of Earth yeah. like they are special yeah right, right? you know they're what I'm special. saying like, but I mean these these are just two unsuspecting dudes that had something crazy yeah. happen to them never seen and, anything before like that and then and you know like the way PJ was saying he was like I mean dude I this shit happened right and we all moved on with our lives like yeah. I, we didn't even realize there was anything you know special about it until right way later yeah and then i was like whoa okay yeah. so there was some significance to this right? right and and you know they noticed something strange was going on but it wasn't a big deal until it was yeah you know yeah which is is kind of cool man That's you know it's super so cool. cool yeah super cool i'm so glad uh that gary reached out to us and i mean now we have that kind of that line of connection and we'll be at ufo con together right he's going to uf ufo con uh, no? no 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 he's he's going to contact in the contact desert. in the desert okay yep. got contact it. in the desert got it got it we, um do we know when that is? Uh, we should figure that out. Shit, we should have asked him. Hey, this is one of those things where we can ask on Twitter. Ah, oh, there we go. We should get on twa- the, We should become twatters. <laughs> yeah, dude. I've never twatted uh, before. But uh, yeah, uh, I mean, I'm sure he'll listen to this episode unless unless he really is a stickler, right? And he has to listen to every single episode. Yeah, it until, might be. It might be a until few weeks. he gets to this episode, <laughs> and by that time. Who knows? Contact in the desert might be over. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's yeah. like, shit, it was two weeks ago, Fuck, man. man. <laughs> Damn it. Hell yeah. Well, dude, that, that was such a great episode. That, that was awesome. Uh, hey, speaking of uh, like, uh, you know, shows and stuff that we've been watching lately, um, I know uh, the last time we had a podcast, you said that my APR was extremely high <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> because I, I, I hadn't seen Game of Thrones. Uh-huh. Um, but I would like to know have you seen the witcher i watched all of it in two days brother no shit i play i played witcher 3 the wild hunt Uh uh-huh and i watched i've been waiting for this series to come out yeah for since they uh, announced it and i watched it in two days did you watch it it's awesome dude it's it's so so awesome so fucking what do you how do you how do you how do you rank it against game of thrones uh, against game of thrones the battle scenes Uh are they make game of thrones battle scenes other than the Battle of the Bastards, they make them look like child's play. Yeah. They're fucking so good. Yeah, The so, Witcher The Witcher is pretty dope. Holy it's shit. Really, bro. really good. If anybody hasn't seen that, it's like watching check like, it out. like the, the style and like accuracy, I guess, and the reality of Battle of the Bastards and Game of Thrones. It's like every battle scene in Witcher. It's so personal, it's on the ground, shit's flying at you. They have like amazing choreo- out choreography with the fighting and shit. Man, it is so good. And yeah. I just love the Witcher series. Yeah. And uh, the dude that plays Geralt, 
it does a really great job with the voice because the voice is a huge part of it. Uh huh. He's got this. Real, I can't do it, but it's like this <laughs> really monotone, like raspy voice. Yeah. And he fucking kills it, dude. Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. Man, so. And the way they make like the Jennifer, uh, Jennifer story, uh, man, everything is so good, dude. Everybody needs to check out Richard, dude. Witcher, not Richard. Richard. <laughs> But if you're not a fan, you should definitely pull up all of Little Richard's albums and listen to them <laughs> Hell yeah. because they are great. Yeah. Uh, in case you didn't know, Little Richard is rock and roll. It is is it's not it's not funk. It's just rock and roll. No, it's it is rock and roll. Okay, well, it, it is rock and roll. Oh damn. Okay, yeah. well that eye contact made me know that it's true. It it's very true. <laughs> It is. You could sell me a truck right now. Rock and roll. With that. <laughs> There's zero down on this rock and roll. Zero APR. <laughs> so, well, yeah, uh, dude. Hell yeah, dude. Well, let's get a little shout out to, uh, let, let's see some spot. We got Phoenix Shaving. Y'all check out Phoenix Shaving. Phoenix yeah. Shaving. Yeah. Um, so he's on episode 18 and 18. that was our episode with, uh, with Doug. Dead. I actually just bought some more soap last night. I need to buy more amount. Yeah. I need to buy some more stuff. Hell yeah. Um, I bought another beard cube. Oh, yeah? As Doug says, he is a beard slayer. Mm. But also, you know, they also protect beards. So, you know, right. they're not they're not biased. The Beard Protection Agency. <laughs> that's, right, that's right. BPA. Hey, Band of Bearded Brothers. <laughs> uh, y'all need to get on that beard cube. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, bro. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's really good shit. Yeah. I, I love that stuff. We need to oh. hook them up with with Doug and see if they'll do a little affiliation thing. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, shaving products. You know, he's got he's got beard care products. Um, he's even got a little car scents for your car. Car scents. Yeah, yeah. They got beach towels and t shirts and and laptop cases and all yeah. kinds of stuff. Oh my god. So uh, yeah, dude. It's like a little empire. So right he's got there. a bunch of merch. Yeah, he's got a ton of merch. You know who else has merch? He's got, he even got baby clothes. Oh my god. Yeah. We need a Baby Yoda shirt. <laughs> oh, yeah. But made for only, I mean, we're obviously for, like, human children, but, like, like market <laughs> for it. For human children. Market it as, it's, this is a baby, this is for Baby Yodas this only. This is for Baby Yodas. Yeah. <laughs> but you know who else has merch is UFO Garage PC. Check it out, y'all. That's right. Go get your hoodie and your, uh, y- y- your shirt. We got socks. We've got hats. We've got all kinds of stuff. It helps support the podcast, you guys. We also have a donation link at the bottom, at the footer of our website. (laughs) (laughs) We definitely do. You seemed like you were going to say something. (laughs) That was an awesome roll you were just on. I know. Well, I looked at you. It looked like you were going to say something. Oh, well, I was just thinking ahead. Like, uh, yeah, and don't forget Abduction 51. Abduction 51. Abduction 51. They're uh, they're still here. They they're still doing their thing. Hello, you know. Oh hi, it's good stuff. Across the pond. Hello, can you hear me? T-shirts, beanies, kind of kind of the same thing. Kind of the same thing. thing. (laughs) Maybe we should have done that in a different order. Can we do it again? Can we do? Can can we talk about our shit after after this? But also, don't forget (laughs) ufogaragepc.com. If you want to be cool like Gary Voorhees. Uh, you're gonna buy you a shirt, a doctor scientist. Yeah, shirt. Gary bought us. He bought a shirt, bro. That's right, dude. That's doctor right. Doctor scientist. <clears throat> and so, hey, I yeah. uh, I had uh, reached out to to Tui. Yeah. Um. Hopefully, we can get her on the show soon. Now that the holidays are over, maybe they're all checking their emails again. Maybe they just don't like the way I email. Yeah, probably that. I, I don't know, but uh, you know what I'm saying. Uh, I, I'm I'm anxious to tell her that she's kind of the whole reason that the cinnamon Terry even exists. Yes, dude. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Cinnamon Terry. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so we need to have our. Let's, let's do it. Let's reach out to her again. Yeah. Again, yeah, we'll have to do it again. Again. Maybe and, maybe I'll let you do it because I notice our emails are different like i'm i'm very personal and i'm like hey how's it going i hope you've had a great week what are mine um, like um yours are like hey want to be on the podcast <laughs> yeah 
Yeah, well, that's the whole, <laughs> <laughs> like you're right to the point. Right, right to the point. Right, right to the yeah. point. Exactly. Uh, I'm like, hey, very lo- direct person. I'm like, hey, I love your stuff. Um, I, I, you know, I, I really, I really dig your material. Yeah. Uh, we think you'd be an awesome guest. We want to start this new year off off right, and uh, I'd love to have you on. People don't want to read too much, it's, Joe. I, I guess not, dude. No, I guess not. So I just gotta stop maybe being we, nice. Maybe we need to fuse to our email. Uh, processes together because I think you need a little of both. Hey, want to come on the show? P.S. Like your shit. I like your shit. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Goodbye. Uh, yeah, dude. Uh, but uh, yeah, man, this episode was epic. Yeah. Uh, great 30th. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't have asked for more, hey, man. Cheers, real quick. Cheers. Dude. 30 episodes. Bro. All right. If bro. you couldn't hear that, that was a clink on our beer cans. <laughs> Brought to you by Modelo Especial. Especial. Golden, full flavor, Pilsner style. Lager with a. What is that? Oh, a clean, crisp <laughs> finished. Brewed in Mexico. Also, if you drink too much, we'll make you fat. <laughs> <laughs> but that's in Spanish, so no, most people don't know what that means. Tu es pinche mucho gordo, wey. Gordo! Gordo, wey. Oh, uh, yeah, man. So, uh, it was good stuff. Grando. Grando is him. Fucking fat fool. I remember that Gordo meant like kind of fat. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's oh, fucking funny. Yeah, dude. Okay, well, uh, Modelo, we're looking for a sponsor. Hit us up, dude. <laughs> yeah. I'll send you an email. Uh, they're like, we're not. St- you just called everybody fat. Let's <laughs> drink our beer. <laughs> No. No. They're like, we know it makes people fat. We know that. <laughs> it's beer. <laughs> uh, all right, dude. Well, that's, uh, that's about it for me, man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The Rebels on a UFO, UFO Garage. garage. Podcast. <laughs> Talk to y'all next time. Peace.